Oh, yes. Oh. 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 <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Awful Music Podcast. Today we have our friend Yuka Bachland, producer, songwriter, mixing engineer, all around awesome musician and music person. Yuka was born and raised and had a lot of his career in Finland and all of Europe and now finds himself residing in Nashville with us. He has both a long and accomplished career, especially for his age, and has tons of wisdom and beautiful insight and experiences to share with us. I'm really excited for you guys to join us. So without prolonging it any further, here's Yuka. Yes, so I don't don't feel any pressure to like be on, just be you. We're gonna start it whenever I can edit around whatever. <clears throat> you know, it's like, it's not a thing. Yeah, just I'm, hangs. I'm, this is lovely. I'm. I've done like TV and legacy stuff, and it's like always such a stressful situation. Yeah, oh, especially yeah. when it's like sound bites and shit. Yeah. Oh my god. I can't do. I don't even know how to do it. <sighs> yeah. I feel like you actually need training for that to be effective. You know what I mean? It's like sales. Yeah. Can't do sales. I, ca I can't sell anything to anyone. I'm. I suck at it. I'm really bad at it. It's funny because whenever I'm into something like a plugin or a song, or everyone's like the way I talk about, it, they're like, "You should fucking, you should work for this." Whoever thousand, it is. thousand percent, I'm the same. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm, if I really believe in something, I naturally am a salesman. I'm yeah. Like all over it. Yeah, for real. I can be passionate, but I'm, I'm really at. I think <clears throat> the kind of sales thing that you have to repeatedly say the same words in the same order and this type of thing. Oh, uh, that's brain that's, pitch. That's, that's brainwashing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's also. <laughs> Like, I don't know. I don't know. What would I know? I've never had a job in my life. <laughs> so. yeah. you've, never, you've never had a job in your life? So what What have you been doing all these years to make a job. money? A job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone, welcome uh, Yuka to the podcast. He's been a star since he was 18. Yeah. <laughs> so eight, eight. Since he was eight. Oh, shit. Yeah. Or, okay. If I, I mean... No, I, I don't, I've don't. i never been a star. Where did you come... Why, why, why would you say that? Sunrise Avenue. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fucking, I, I played in that band and others, too. But, give, I mean, it doesn't us, make me a star. Give, I, give, I, us, I give us some specifics. What's Sunrise Avenue? And what did you do? It's a big uh, Finnish band, big in Europe. Hell yeah. They just quit, actually, so they were very big. But Fuck them. I, I, I was doing a bunch of... <laughs> I was doing a bunch of work in um, in music before that, obviously. So that that's that's maybe the, the career... You know, commercial career highlight, but yeah. What do you What yeah. do you do with music, my man? What do I do with music besides besides hate it? Besides focus <laughs> on how much you despise it. Yeah, <laughs> um, I produce music uh, for a living. I I have since I was um, uh, seventeen. Dude, that's fucking nuts. I can't imagine <sighs> getting paid to even mix or fuck even edit at seventeen. Can't even imagine that. You're yeah, doing something you like for money at that 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 young. I mean, I didn't start making money in music <clears> until like a few years ago, and I'm 38, 30, about to be 38. Right, and that's uh, and for, man, I fucked up. I for me, it's still technically tangential. Years. Fucking, I'm I'm YouTube music. You know, it's not <laughs> not traditional. Like, I'm I'm getting gigs. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I started touring when I was 15. Jesus, dude. Was that with Sunrise Avenue? No, 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 no. That was uh, a top 40 band. What'd you play? Got keyboards and drums. Actually, I ended up playing drums. I ended up subbing for our drummer when he got bigger gigs. So then I was still playing some gigs. Um, I was oh. playing the drums. For for anyone else who's not familiar, if you haven't listened to other episodes of the podcast, Yuka is a, a good friend of ours, and we've been hanging out with him quite a bit. And he's just a damn good hang. Not to mention extraordinarily talented. Yeah, best keyboardist on earth. Easy. Dude, that fucking Easy. that fucking solo you showed me for your song. That, oh yeah, that so Yuka is my yeah. So for everyone else too, Yuka uh, is my writing partner, and uh, we've written a bunch of songs. We're working on yeah, partner. gay husbands. <laughs> that's the right. Yeah, that's yeah. That's yeah. Um, Civil union <laughs> enjoyer. <laughs> yeah, we've been working. We've been working together since we became friends. I think it was basically a year ago. We're um, hanging weekly. It oh, takes yeah. a, it's it's one one thing that like one thing that I've I've learned is how valuable it is to have someone like you with complementary skill sets to mm. help with uh, the creation of art and I've like working with you the last year has made me a lot better <clears throat> and I feel the same. a lot a lot more productive I think too you know um, just because having someone whose ear you can trust in the right ways 
can make you feel empowered and totally yeah. yeah without a doubt yeah it is very interesting how this is actually a social sport like music is actually a social interesting I'm, yeah I'm because curious. like I've I've been making records on Dropbox since 2010 pretty much like I, I would go fly somewhere do a recording session and then like the 90 the the, la <laughs> the remaining 90% of the time I would be sitting on my computer and I don't I still don't think I, I I don't like it. I I'd rather spend time with others. Dude, totally. Um, I I I think it's very social, and it's it's become this kind of everybody yeah. works alone. And oh, well, you as well, a YouTuber, you know how that is. And I, oh my god, I I wish I could like even if I'm doing my own work myself, <coughs> I wish I could have someone just there to right. be social with. Or even just, like, to bounce something off really quick. Seriously. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it's actually been a huge help getting into this little fucking text group with other YouTubers. Because, like, hands down the most stressful thing is thumbnails and titling. The thing that has nothing to do with video, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so wow. being able to send that off to them and be like, what do you think? And getting feedback has been so reassuring and helpful and, like, helping me get better at that. So, like, yeah, like, fucking, I, I agree with you. I mean... The social aspect of production is invaluable. It's, it's, it's really also just the the difference, at least that I've noticed, uh, having moved from LA and doing music there to doing it here, is the the scene here is so much more social, along with not being as awkwardly like snaky and competitive in ways that don't make you better. We're, here, it's the opposite, and I've noticed that like people here definitely want to socialize with you in order to feel comfortable working with you. And it's definitely a lot more productive when it goes in that order. Mm. And if, if it's not in that order, I find that like a lot of writing sessions I'll have, people are always going out for drinks afterwards mm. and solidifying the relationship. And um, that's really just a product of the culture in Nashville, I think. And I've noticed that it's just so drastically different from uh, LA. And you could probably speak to the because uh, you just okay, came. Were, were you in he, LA? No, he moved here from Vegas. Yeah, oh, and I was shit, working in okay. LA a lot, so a word, I'm, okay. I'm I'm used to whatever that is. And and I was about to add that flakiness is kind of oh, not God. as much a thing here yeah. as I it is. Can't stand it. No, I'm from Finland. <laughs> you know, like, there is no such thing. There's no small talk, and there's no flakiness. Yeah, I I dig. I'm so in. But, I mean, yeah, you just mean it can be just, awkward, but when you say something, you actually mean it. Right, yeah. yeah, to the point where it actually might be laughably, like, yeah, <laughs> accurate. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, that's our thing too. It's like you and I have we we've always, we've been working together every every week, and yeah, like it's it's uh, it's almost to the point where like we trust each other each other's reliability enough to where we like don't we like barely have to check on if it's happening. We just know. Yeah, it's like the night before. We're like tomorrow. We're like, yep, good to go. Ready, psyched. You know, this is this that's is the way. It, that's the way it should be. Because yeah. like, there's so much about creativity for me that's facilitated by being able to depend on a routine, and being able to be, you know, being able to be comfortable enough in the plans that you make with people. Because if you're stressed about that, then it's that's not going to facilitate the greatest possible creativity. I right. find, and so. Like when we work together, we're so productive. It's like we write the coolest shit and compliment each other in such cool ways. But the lack of stress of you know just because of, because of how reliable reliably we're working together, yeah. that facilitates so much more creativity than if like you work with someone one time and they canceled three times before and they don't seem that serious and then you can't really become <clears throat> vulnerable around them. As much it's, because you don't yeah, feel like they, you, they're they not trustworthy. The entire right? cycle that starts from that, yeah. you know. Um, but that's also, I mean, we're in a fortunate situation where we have that time. We talked about that the other day. You know, we are fortunate to make enough money in other, you know, venues or in other... To, uh, ways yeah. in the in, yeah. in the industry that we have that time that we can be reliable as well. Yeah. A lot of people are like constantly like battling these types of things, and they want to they say yes to way more things that they are actually able to do. And and uh, while I love saying yes, but Steve Jobs said focusing is about saying no. Fuck and, yeah. 
if you yeah. want to actually focus then you gotta say no sometimes and mm -hmm. so do you, do you think that's why people are flakier in la why, i don't why, know why la per se but i mean la is just like physically like constructed in such a way that it's not really difficult not to be flaky there i mean really like, yeah. with the traffic is yeah, with yeah. With that, it, yeah it takes like oh. an hour to travel a mile by car uh, Fuck, dude. Yeah, Especially if you also, live in Hollywood. It's unpredictable as well to the point where it's like yeah. you really like some. It's sometimes most of the time people really don't want to be flaky. They understand how it how it sucks. I don't know, dude. I th I think. But I mean, yeah, it's in. The, it's it, it's gotten to the point where it's in the culture al already, like embedded so deeply, and you know, it's, it's hard just, to say. But yeah, what's it's just that it's such a it's such like a social clout party scene there that people want to seem productive while they're out networking and and you know at clubs and bars and stuff they want to they want to be seen saying yes right but, but they don't but then behind the scenes they're they're flaking yeah you know because if they're there and they're agreeable in the environment then they're gonna seem more fun more yeah. people are gonna want to, want to talk to them and they're gonna have a better network but man here like if i meet someone when i'm out here and it's like it, we could both be wasted and it could be like midnight and mm. on a weekday. And if if you have a real talk with someone and you're like, yeah, let's write this week. How about tomorrow? Mm. At, how's 9 a.m.? They fucking they you they show they, up. They, show up. Yeah, they text be you beforehand. They show up. And it's like that is that's like that's impossible but how is that not a, even a th like how is that a thing that it's not a thing like what, what? it's the bar yeah, the bar right. the bar is so low that's right. the thing yeah culturally whereas in finland you guys have that on lock have had it on lock for i mean that's Obviously, why individual so is different or whatever but we, like we were even discussing last last podcast about um how just finnish or northern european musicians just fucking look down so hard on american musicians do they <laughs> yeah Daw apparently. dawes was explaining how <clears throat> how Nord nordic people generally nordic musicians when they see americans that are professionals uh, on stage who just who just can't play the parts or just well, aren't, well or there's just that, aren't that that's good. probably a thing in They're metal like, though what is, why, i think it's the other way around in jazz though really what do you mean? yeah i mean oh americans are better at jazz should go without saying fucking, fucking, <laughs> fucking black people my man yeah, we got uh, it yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got it. no but seriously we like blacks. we I, I come from I come from Finland I come from a circle where American musicians are very much looked up to really it seems like to me though the way you present it when we write and I'm and I'll I'll pitch an idea that you call very American harmonically. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. You love that shit, and I do too. Which I <laughs> I didn't realize that it was American because to me, since most of my listeners from my artist project are Nordic people, I thought that my taste in harmony leaned in that direction. Mm. But according to you, it's uh quite it's kind of weird you know, combination. You know a lot mm. about that because of your your dad, right? What did, yeah. what did your what did your dad do over in Finland? He was a um, African American music theory teacher, a professor, and pioneer. Actually, he actually had to invent you, a bunch of say, words. Can you say his name? Uh, Kai Backlund. Word. Okay. So yeah, he was a dude who who wrote the pretty much the first book on the subject, and um, yeah, on he had to invent music. African American music, like yeah. like for Europe or for all of it, uh, for Finland for in Finnish. Finland. Gotcha. Oh, so there oh, was word, no okay. terminology in Finnish. Like it, it was all classical. Damn. So you would have all these like musical phenomena explained by the classical terms, but then you have something like swing. How the hell do you explain that? <laughs> you know, uh, there's no, they, there's just no vocabulary. Triplets so, didn't suffice. Take, take a fucking. Yeah, well, that, my dad came came up with "Call me more Jesus," which is like. Uh, tr triplet alternative or something like that. Well, that means or triplet, yeah. Okay. So whatever, yeah. but it doesn't translate well. But any anyhow, he was he was passionate about that. And yeah. He he actually worked with Herb Pomeroy from Berkeley. Oh yeah. Um and um, uh, yeah they 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 I I don't remember how it went. Maybe they wrote together the curriculum for the school he was teaching in. Oh. Something like that. Deep connection. They were like sharing their ideas. And so, so your that. dad really, for lack of a better term, brought jazz to Finland. Education wise, pretty much. Education wise, okay, yeah. jazz education. Ed cool. Education <clears throat> from the theory side of things, one hundred percent. Yeah, just kind of cod uh, codified the harmony, the j jazz harmony for Finland. And rhythm, yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, oh, yeah. it, it, it was it was done there more or less systematically before. Like people were digging jazz and playing jazz, but. 
to to be able to notate for example to go you know to to have a situation where you go play a gig and you have a, people sight reading that stuff that didn't happen a lot if if at all before my dad oh. came into the picture so like my my qu next question would be what happened to you i mean if I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yeah i yeah. just really don't know <laughs> yeah, like in, all, in all honesty like i've i've seen heard and seen yuka improvise you fucking badass yeah, it's my hilarious man. You, yeah. even when Thanks, even, guys. When, even yeah. when you're like this is terrible and shitty i'm like well i'm fucking entranced i'm ready yeah, to get married true. right now you know? <laughs> thanks guys that's such a nice compliment but it's it's I mean, jazz is an improvisational study as well fuck it's, yeah you know that's mostly what it is yeah yeah it, i mean it's that's play it's great <laughs> yeah well i mean improvisation is something that it, it really doesn't come naturally to everybody and yeah <clears throat> and or it, maybe it, it does but it, it it you have to unlock it at certain age if you don't do it by that age then you're going to be always afraid of it to the point where you don't want to do it yeah well, that, that and also it's like anything else it's a it's like a muscle you got to work mentally mm -hmm. you know what i mean and that's like I had it when I was younger, but I was also like, my vocabulary and my articulation was garbage. Mm. But like, nowadays, I've like barely ever practiced it. It would take a while to get it back. Mm. Yeah. Like, I'm sure I could, but it's like, it would take a while. The thing is, you, you need to be able to just jump in. <clears throat> it's not about practice. It's about letting go. Mm. That's not ultimately what it's about. And as a songwriter, you know that because it's the same process. You can just obviously refine your lines and refine your melodies and refine your whatever, but yeah. improvisation is just that in real time. Uh -huh. But it's I, I think it's the letting go and jumping in. That's the thing. But that, that takes confidence, right? You have to yeah. be confident enough, not even externally, not, not in, in relation to other people, but to yourself like this is gonna sound like shit and then like fucking like well i'm gonna get over it and then i'm just gonna yeah. keep playing I'm, yeah. I'm terrible at getting over it i'm horrible yeah but <laughs> like <laughs> yeah this is also like uh, i'm sure there's some like we should have some like psychologists on like to ask oh, like, I, what, I what to. are the personality and temperament aspects of of that yeah that's it, true it, because you must be enormous i I, mm. I imagine you gotta be pretty fucking high in trait openness like, like oh, yeah. you got to and probably actually i don't know if it would be low or high in neuroticism because i feel like neuroticism and artistry go hand in hand really well but mm. but you can't be neurotic about yourself in the moment or otherwise you're going to tense up you know what i mean <clears throat> no that's the thing that's the thing what's what's the correct amount of neuroticism yeah <laughs> because because it, it might be you know part of the inf inspirational background of whatever you you're about to engaging but really to to get over that threshold you know, neuroticism is something that's going to fight back it's oh, that hard that. For, for me it would it would just be there in a crippling way until i had sufficiently practiced and had a, a expansive enough of vocabulary mm. that i mean you know like i've seen countless guitar players who are spectacular at improvising and when you're, that, when you're that, shit. when you're that, when you're that, well, no, I'm, I mean, that wasn't where I was going with it. Oh, but, fair enough. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. But when it, but when you get to that point, and I saw a lot of it of it at Berkeley, everything that you play, like ninety percent of it, sounds finished and would be good enough for a record. Mm. And a lot of people, um, a lot of guys, I spend a lot of time for, I don't know why, but I spend a lot of time when I'm when I have time to watch YouTube. I love watching. Uh, there's a guy named Tim Pierce. He's a mm. yeah, huge session player. Yeah, right? He's fabulous. And I love watching him and other top session guitar players chop it up about how they got to the point where they literally they have a joke that's not it's not a joke. They're dead serious. Where you don't make mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> they don't make mistakes. Like they, and they know when they're like mentoring someone, they know when he's they'll be like, oh, he's ready now. He doesn't make mistakes anymore. He can, and these players, it, they're they're just speaking. They're speaking the guitar like a like a like i speak better than i speak fluently in english when i really know what i'm trying to say and yeah. thought about it beforehand they're they speak that that much better fluently on the guitar and that just it takes like i get what you're saying about having to unlock it young 
but it really does take a fuckload of practice because you don't have oh, a vocabulary. Yeah. You're not born with a right. harmonic vocabulary and uh, and technique. But even more so, it takes when, listening. Oh, totally. Listen. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like fuck, like when you're when you're fucking tiny and you're saying your first words, your parents are trying to coach you along as to how to say it properly. Hmm. It's like the same same type of thing is like. You can improvise, but you got to refine to make it fucking. Yeah, but like, tasty. think about it. Try to try to play bebop without ever hearing bebop. It's like can, the I most can. ridiculous f f concept. Like you have to indulge in it for like a decade, yeah, in order to understand the language, even on a like a surface level. Let alone then, but th that's what I mean. Like practic practicing, practicing is practi practicing should be separated from. The act of improvisation. You can improvise without any skill at all. That's actually, you know, it's actually funny too. Is That's that at, at Berkeley, um, one of my, a couple of my favorite teachers said, uh, used to say that uh, listening is practice hmm. as, as well. I and fully agree with that. When it and comes to jazz, for especially, I anything, think. any musical endeavor, I would argue that yeah, holds true. I mean, probably. Whether whether it's production, mixing, com composition, improvisation, whatever it is, some of the the best learning experiences I ever had was critical listening. Dude, mm. fuck yeah, it's the best. Yeah, like I I, the only thing I find more cathartic is writing, and I don't write nearly as much as I probably should. It's a muscle I don't work as much, but it's also because I guess like I want to actually be inspired by something to do it. So like right. in that in that sense, it's not a job. I'm not a professional in that sense. You know. But also, like, fucking the stuff that I make wouldn't be nearly as good if I didn't have, like, all that list, a lot of listening to a lot of different shit. And then there's ear training and analysis. Totally, yeah. And these are, like, when, if you want to be professional, then you want to actually get better. You, first of all, you need to know what you want to get better at, because you, focusing is about saying no. You can't be better at everything. That's impossible. So you need to analyze, and that for that you need your ear. So, like, you need to be able to you know listen to all kinds of music and you know soak it in and then like figure out first of all what you like but also like what is it that i like in this one yeah what is the particular thing that i want Man. to so, recreate or practice or whatever that is yeah so i like i, I did um I guess two and two and a half years uh, as a music major like cl classically trained type of shit and i have a whole bunch of that theory understanding and I kind of broke it out into its like main components so that I don't want to like I don't want to be like oh well this is a Neapolitan six so, like how is that fucking helpful to me other than <laughs> telling someone else you know what I mean <clears throat> but like thinking about it I'll push when, back on that I mean, I'm, 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 getting, <laughs> Can't like, wait. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that but let me finish okay. this let me finish yeah. this uh <laughs> this this thought so like when you're like, how how do I hear something? What do I like, and how do I reproduce it? Mm. I find it's more effective to boil it down to an emotion. Oh, gay. No, I, honestly, like 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 <laughs> what, what's you. the, the, the <laughs> honest, honestly like make the, it the more level, purple. The, the level, no, no, <laughs> that's okay. Making it more purple is stupid. That's not an emotion. Purple is not a fucking emotion. I'm talking about the tension and release that happens mm -hmm. when a, a certain snippet of time of sound goes by. What sure, but how do you happen? notate it? Okay, well, that's, how do that's, you reproduce it? If you how do don't you explain know theoretically? it? How do you explain it? Well, I, I can re, I can reproduce it theoretically because I have the theory background. But I'm what I'm trying to say is like, oh, so it is helpful. It's almost like it is helpful. I am a thousand percent saying that's not what I'm saying. Though I'm saying is like, I just love I, misrepresenting the, your argument. Thanks. <laughs> we just love it. The, 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 the emotion that's felt behind it, I find, is more important than the theory itself. Oh, of course, well, we all agree on that. Of course, that, that yeah. goes without saying. But but if you want to get better, the emotion is not going to help you much. It, 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 it's like, going to help like, you like maybe said, to be motivated or inspired. Like, but. like I said, I got that that intense fucking theory education, and I probably should have been practicing it more. But I mean, that gave me enough of, for lack of a better term, the math behind it all. Sure. To, to be able to not have to worry about it as much anymore. Like, I, I know enough of the rules now that I can just allow it to be my, my liquid playground. That's you know? awesome. <laughs> that's, you need that's, to know the rules in order to break them. That's, totally, that's, totally. And yeah. that's, yeah. Also, that's also a joke, a, a Berkeley joke is, uh, you know, learn everything you can while you're there and then forget it. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. That's every oh, music that's academy a, joke. That's a, yeah, it yes. is. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, because learning theory was, um, and I'm not as good at it. I'm I'm fine at it. I'm just not remotely as good at, as you are. Yeah, I don't think I'm very good at theory per se. Actually, I just have a really. You're, you're better. I than have both an insane ear, but I, 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 my theory, like, 
No, you always you always have the answer on on like harmony questions. No, that's ear. That's mostly ear related. Okay. Well, but you but you know how to communicate it in 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 Enough. with the correct terminology. Yes, yeah, so for sure. Please, yeah, and also like let's all know that. <laughs> like have, yeah, at least fucking, we can. Say, that, if we yeah. might be professional music yes. people, then like you, please. You got you got to know how the fuck to talk to people. Right. Absolutely. Come on. Yeah. But you you also have the advantage of being a keys player. Absolutely. So, so your your voice your voicing ear is fucking exceptional. Well, it, first really, of all, really it's good. visual and ha it has the largest. <laughs> you know register so it's like you know a lot of arrangers even if they're not their, their first instrument isn't piano or keys they like Quincy Jones great example you know learned it just I, for I, the sake of I, I yeah for voice to. leading it's just it, there's it, it's so you can like what it's the? so straightforward because it, there's only one way to fucking play C3 <laughs> yep there's only one place on the goddamn thing <laughs> unlike guitar yeah. where there's four mm, no. and it's obnoxious mm. and they uh, don't always sound the same either they never sound the same that's, well that's part of what's cool about guitar is that you have all those textural options that's true. for the same pitch that's true but you know but, you, you know what you do on a keyboard knob mm. <laughs> mm. It's you can way easier. Well, not on, you can't you know, yeah. piano, but you can also fuck with the strings inside you know okay how much John have, Cage style how much have yeah, you that done shit? that I've you? done that actually. My my professor, he's got a device, Gary Ikonen. You should you should look him up. Him up. He has the device that he invented. That is kind of like it's not a cra the the crazy, pe prepared John Cage prepared piano thing, but it's the idea. But it makes this Arabic crazy scale, oh. you know, and, and you can just like really e yeah. There's that type of thing, and you can just put it on and take it out quite easily and oh, wow. effortlessly and so you can turn a grand piano into this thing and like, what, like what, what boom type, you can what type of timbre are we talking about <clears throat> what do you mean it's it's, it's tuning it's intonation tuning. oh it, it, yeah. it oh, changes the Alters, tuning oh obviously it fucks with the timbre as well but like that's not the point yeah so yeah. i i haven't i mean obviously i, I made a, a bunch of pop records playing the piano strings with all kinds of like drumsticks for example that was a great that's a great sound, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put an example here. Just fucking really quick. <laughs> this string is already ready to go. It's actually a series of four strings uh, tied together with rosin. So yeah, I, I, everybody's done that, especially when they're kids. But you know, you can also use that in a productive way. Uh, I, even okay. I I didn't do it as a kid because I was barely allowed to touch our piano. You had <laughs> a piano a that's yes. already had had, had an upright. Had but, an upright. Good, well, us too. Our family had. Fucking okay. a. Yeah, my family had this, this unfucking believable. Still does this old, amazing no, Steinway. No huge, surprise. When do I get to play bands. it? Yeah. Well, when they move here, hopefully they bring it. I, I so, will play it. There's no way they're not going to bring that thing. They they adore that thing, and it's it's what I learned theory on when uh, when I was starting in uh, in in middle school. Dude, that would make that a fucking awesome YouTube video. Taking that thing on a flatbed the whole way down from fucking Philly and having Yuka play piano on it the entire time. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, badass as shit. You know what's funny though is uh, back to what you we were saying earlier about about listening and and. Uh, kind of tailoring your educational approach based off of what you know you like and what you want to do. Uh, I'm nowadays for the viewers and listeners who don't know, singing is my main thing. Uh, as far as an instrument, if someone asked me, what do you play? Well, I, I'm a singer, but I also play guitar and, and drums and keys a little bit and, you know, stuff like that. And he's, he's kind I, of all right at vocals. He's yeah. kind of okay. Thanks. <laughs> goes <laughs> and uh but the funny thing is is uh is i was taking lessons all through high school and i spent more time with my vocal instructor showing him examples of stuff i liked and asking him how do, how are they doing it like that how are they and he was an incredible teacher he was uh he had won the Pavarotti international Pavarotti competition like, oh, twice fuck. or something holy no. shit <clears throat> yeah this guy Perry Brisbane he is insane and he's an opera singer and uh, mm. <clears throat> he uh he would tell me all the terms 
He would help me. He would whenever I noticed a texture, you know, uh, how uh, I noticed it sounds their, their voice it thins out there, but it sounds higher and brighter. Like, oh, so that's 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 head voice, that's mixed voice, that's chest, whatever. And uh, he taught me all the terminology behind both rock singing and classical singing, and they're very different terminologies. And very uh, different. Well, at least the uh, the goal is mm. is they're they're not really actually, but it's just. I'm not going to nerd out on that, but um, Some, someday, but, but what someday happened we'll was, do a podcast where it's just you and me, and we'll nerd out on that. I sure, want, I want oh, that'd be beautifully educational. Yeah, vocal technique is uh, <clears throat> there's so much depth to it, but um, <clears throat> so like the weird thing was is th- all those years, and there was probably five years of me just like uh, doing that with this guy Perry Brisbane, who was great, and um. I never, I never really tried. Like we would do the, we would do the part of the lesson where we would talk about singers and technique and stuff, and he'd be like, "Okay, now it's time to sing," and we go to the piano. And I didn't actually try. I would, he would do scales, and I would literally just go, ah, just like not really <laughs> singing because I was right. too, I was too scared and embarrassed right. to actually s- to really sing. Yeah. And my parents, that whole time, like a year goes by, two years go by, and I'm still doing that. I'm not getting, you know, they don't hear me getting better or anything. And they tried to discourage me from being a singer. They're like, you just don't have a good voice. Like, you, oh, oh, that's horrible. Oh, and oh. You know, they, I mean, they obviously regret it now, but uh, it was not their fault because it was my, it was my fault yeah. that I wasn't actually trying to sing. I was too no. embarrassed about it. So I was just doing the, I was just, I was just doing the speaking in tune thing. Mm-hmm. La, 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 just it whatever. Just the, sustain yeah. talking. Yeah, exactly. That's all I was doing. And, yeah. and so my parents didn't think I was a singer. My, my vocal instructor didn't, you know, it was just, Clearly, I had a I had an ear for singers, but maybe I couldn't do it myself. And then, but when I actually got the balls, when I went to Berkeley, my first year, I, got, I actually got into Berkeley for guitar. I got accepted for guitar. Really? And the day I got there, it's probably the second day, to be fair. The first day I got there, and I was accepted for guitar. I like did the test and everything, whatever. And then I'm like. I'm go. I'm walking through the dorms, and within the dorms of Berkeley, there's uh, at the 150 dorms at least. I don't know about the other ones, but at the 150 dorms, all every floor of dorm room has a special wing. That's all practice rooms, mm-hmm. and they're just little cubes that are basically that are kind of soundproofed, and they're tiny little cubes. And I walked in there that first night, and I saw just a bunch of guys, guitar players, just miserable practicing, just doing this <clears throat> yep. and that, and I'm like. I'm fucking, I'm switching to vocals. <laughs> and, then, and then I had to actually, and then it was at that moment that I actually saw, I was like, I had to switch my principle. So I had to actually finally, for the first time, sing in like really yeah, sing proper. The, the way that I sang in my car, right? Well, oh, in yeah. front of yes. other people, right? That's yes. so, well, the I mean, way I sang when other people, I knew others couldn't hear. Then I went and I did this that. why you're such a pussy not singing karaoke? Oh, well, no, I mean, it has nothing to do with that anymore, <laughs> but... But it was just, it was simply that, um, but what I'm, what I'm saying is that going back to my lessons, uh, with my, with my teacher in high, in, in high school, I learned so, so much from him, from us listening to singers together, him telling me what they were doing. No. And then when I actually went to try to sing, I had all that knowledge and it made it so like, it made it happen so much quicker to where the first year uh, of my uh, of my career at Berkeley, uh, like the the main class if you're a singer, the the class that you're supposed to like bring your A game for is called uh, I think it's I think it's called Vocal Lab or so I forget. Um, but it's the one where you come in every week and you have to sing a song, and then right. everyone tells you why you where you fucked up and why you how you could get better, right? <laughs> yeah, and like it's a, it's basically first... Mike the music snob the class. You come in, <laughs> yeah. you perform like. Right. They perform, yeah. This is why and then you all, suck. All the, all the students, all the students tell you, tell them, critique you, and the teacher critiques you. Mm-hmm. And do, doing that for a year, like, fucking, it got my shit in gear. Like, mm. and before I knew it, are, are I was you, before I saying? knew it, I was getting before I knew it, I was getting like that was the class I had an A in, and I was regarded as like the like the rock singer at Berkeley, and That's that was just so cool. a, are you year of, a year of a year. That exclusively positive feedback is not necessarily healthy. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I have a no, no. It's funny. All, all, all my, 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 I'll make it real quick. My, my point simply is, is that I feel like for for how quick, yeah, for how quick 
my improvement was I don't think it would have been such if it weren't for all the years I spent listening critically and learning the terminology about what that's what singers were doing and then I could apply go hand it in hand. I mean pro I probably would have been better off if I had actually been trying to sing that whole time I had a similar right, but... experience in uh, Sibelius Academy where I had been making music on my own without any knowledge of theory for like years and years and years I started with like you know little synthesizer workstation sequencers and then I moved on to you know you know, home home built PC with MicroLogic. You know, three point whatever Windows three what, point what, whatever. What year is this? Nineteen ninety two. Nice. All right. So because you're thirty nine, right? Yeah, thirty nine. Yeah. Now okay. in twenty twenty two December. Outed. Outed. Not for long. Thirty. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna turn forty in uh, in uh, a few weeks. But anyhow, so wait, when's your birthday? Thirtieth. Oh, yeah, our birthdays are like within wait, a couple December, days. Wait, December December thirtieth? Yeah, no. my birthday. It's my fucking days. birthday too. You are shitting Dennis, me, brother. <laughs> Damn, dude. Dude, our birthdays, all, oh my all God. three of our birthdays are the same week. Yeah, it's going to so, be so fucking wild. three. I have two it's brothers. Be 3 a.m. We're going to be hammered as fuck. Dude, we have to, we have to have our... we're going to be like, when do we start? We have to have our birthday... <laughs> no, we have to have our birth, We have to have a... Uh, like, a, we have to have our birthday party together. You guys down? I'm going to wrap... Yes. So I'm going to wrap this up quick. So, yeah, I have two brothers. Before. I have two brothers, and we have the same birthday, too. Oh fucking like yeah, you have the, uh, three, the, the, three brothers younger the younger brother and older half brother so different mother is this, same fucking wow. birthday is this the result of like Finnish healthcare where they're like it's all planned it's the, the it's the <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, a, yeah. it's the music theory professor you know <laughs> okay so but I have a very similar experience with with that so I was doing all this music and I didn't have any knowledge of any of the theory then I went to the academy I actually I got accepted at the age of 13 which is wow like uh, unbelievable and i'm Fucking super ridiculous. thankful for that because yeah. i got all the training i opted out you know i opted not to try to graduate or anything like that because i was already mm -hmm. like as i told you 15 i was already touring 17 already producing yep. Yep. no need to graduate but anyhow it it was crazy the, the two years between the ages of 15 and 16 when I was really like I was touring and studying at the same time I got all the terminology within those two years and all the piano Kari Ekona was a great 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 teacher I got all the piano and the jazz knowledge that I needed I mean obviously you can always get more you can you always learn but for that time I got everything in those pretty much those two years and it was amazing I was like okay well I've been doing all this stuff for like 10 years with all these like, you know, makeshift, you know, home studio, like children's type of tools. And now I just got like the theory. I, I knew all these phenomena from before. And now I just got the names for them and I'm ready to go. And it was like yeah. so smooth and awesome. It was got yeah. pretty much the opposite of what you have, but similar in that sense that there was this long leading, leading into this, this intense time where you kind of realize that this is, this is it now. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's so I, it's it's so cool. Yeah. In, in my yeah. in my personal opinion, I think you can understand music without having quote unquote the theory background. I think I think yeah. I, I think one hundred percent. I think the yeah. theory is mostly useful for communicating with other. I was about to say you're word. on okay. the money. Okay, like, that's okay, exactly. Yeah. I don't what know, it no, is. but for me, understanding a theory has enabled me I, uh, to, to know where to go if I if I if I want to evoke a particular yeah, but you do, emotion, you do that with but, an ear. I, I would argue you do you do that with your ear yeah yeah totally it's like it's not some, sometimes my ear is not sufficient though sometimes I have to know it seems that it is though <laughs> okay okay so hold on so like even if yours isn't it can be helpful for people who don't have as a native a gift necessarily but there is a possibility for a person to know music, for lack of a better term, without knowing how to describe it with the with it with a English or Finnish language. Mm. You know what I mean, dude? I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I remember the day I told you uh, we were talking about my friend Misha from uh, Periphery. When I remember the day I told I told you that he doesn't know theory. And yeah. Like holy shit. Well, he doesn't have he doesn't have to know theory. I didn't know theory before. Like I said, like before I went to the academy and they, they taught me what, actually they taught me what my dad had, you know, <laughs> taught them most, most of the time. That's funny. So, so 
um, it, it was, you know, I was fine being alone at home doing my tracks and they sounded great for somebody <clears throat> who was like, a, you know, preteen or a teenager. And, you know, I didn't need to be able to, uh, I didn't need the theory because I was alone. The yeah. only, the, 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 when I started needing theory was when I went out there and play shows and I was, I would have to like communicate my musical ideas to my peers and then Lord knows it's kind of it was purple. pretty, it was, it was pretty <laughs> yeah. helpful to know like what a major seventh chord is. Yes. Mm. Yes. But knowing, but applying, knowing the formulas and the intervals, uh, allows you to, to move around, you know, keys on an instrument and be able to recall the same emotions. So it's not, it's not a necessity. Knowing those formulas really helps. I mean, it's not a necessity, but it's an extremely useful toolkit. I think, I think primarily theory, theory is to take the sonic non-semantic phenomena of music and be able to translate and allow it into another beer to rise out of yeah. The case. <laughs> uh, the case. I, I'm God damn it. Right, let me sorry. Let's um, so catch it. Take it takes the the sonic non semantic phenomena of music and allows you to translate it into English so you can express it to someone else without having to hear the exact same thing. Or in yeah. Finnish. That's, that, or, or in Finnish. <laughs> uh, but, like, but also learning... Lear, learning, lear, learning the vocabulary at the same time does teach you how how these, these principles it. and formulas work, for lack of a better term. Ball. Hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that thing do that. <laughs> it's you know? more elegant. It, it makes things quicker. Makes it, it more, makes it more objective too. It enables uh, professionalism. <laughs> yes, totally. Absolutely. Um, so like make those it. are the things, but none of that replaces your ear. To to but without none, a doubt. None, of, yeah. none of that does that. And so so that's I think theory and ear training, or solfege or whatever you call that. It 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 needs to be separated because you can. And you have great examples of this, like in, in the, classical my, my, music. My favorite yeah. class was ear training. <laughs> yeah. So, but you have, you know, people like drawing these very theoretical, like theoretical, you know, lines of music without even caring about how it sounds like. This, like, like you know, fuck, contemporary like, classical. I was gonna say like fucking uh, like twelve tone type of shit. All this stuff. Fuck and, and, that. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Really, and. Uh, and it re kind of really actually fucked up. So, but, <laughs> but, but, but you know what I, I mean? I love that shit. I, I, I don't say that I don't love that shit, but it's a different beast than Bebop, for example, or, you know, a rock, you know, Jimi yes. Hendrix. Yes. It's just like, it's not the same Wait, what category. Mu what of, music are we specifically talking about? Or, well, I'm just comparing like we, we math, like theory, theory based music. We're talking like a, a, a I was, feel based music. When, I, when I said twelve tone, I was speaking specifically of like atonal, where right. you can't have any, any, not set like like you can't have any note um, no re center. repeat within. I mean, yeah. rules like, arbitrary yeah. you, you set some arbitrary framework and rules and then you just mathematically follow them and that's yeah. your music it, it becomes, that's fine it I, I don't have more... anything against it but you know yeah. in my own personal life fuck it I'm not interested I'm, I'm yeah. go by the feel I, I, I'm always searching for the feel as a pop yeah. music top 40 wannabe producer that's what don't, I'm always don't degrade yourself as, not, as a person everybody's who's a wannabe, good at music but currently I don't have a top 40 hit so I'm a wannabe so that's what oh, I'm saying oh come on yeah no but yeah but also it is like that so <laughs> he does want to be he does have that's not that's not what I, that's not what I mean I don't, I don't fucking I don't think top 40 producers have a monopoly or an oligopoly on fucking feel I think <laughs> yeah. there's a ton no, of no, people no, who no, understand that's feel exactly what people. I'm not saying oh, okay, 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 but okay. I mean as, as you know coming from that world where yeah, yeah, entertainment yeah. you know you want to reach people you want to touch people's genitalia. feelings and heart your genitalia obviously as well oh, absolutely and, and other Big part of it parts oh, yeah. that's you know, I come from there, and you know that in in that realm, in that domain, these theoretical arbitrary structures don't have any place. Mm -hmm. Just they just don't. They don't touch anyone. Nobody cares. I mean, oh, the, like the really weird fucking ones. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, mean no, no, but look at it. Like, look, just look at Spotify. You, you, I don't have to be here telling you this. <laughs> you know. I, th I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, I think it depends upon what the what the track is. You know, I, th I think like. You, 
or maybe it depends upon how <clears throat> you're meaning it because you can always fit them in like the 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 top 10 or whatever you can fit them into those theoretical frameworks it's just supremely uninteresting to to look at it that well, way. Well, especially in 2022. <laughs> yeah, with, oh my god, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm about I'm like, about to record a video. Like, look at the freaking like diversity. It's like there's none. Like Barry or somebody just posted this. Like there is no key changes. Ha, ha, there hasn't been any key changes in the last decade. I, I personally think that, that's, that the last that's, actually that's the least interesting thing to me is the yeah key yeah of changes. course it's just like well, don't worry the, about the, it but my my key point is changes in my life the last <laughs> decade of popular music in my opinion in just only my opinion has been the most boring in the history of thousand percent unfortunately pop music. yeah because pop music even in the in in, in the two thousand I'm a nineties kid so I, I I I love the nineties but like why yeah. do you think it's become that way. What do you think was the impetus? Jesus Christ! For, like I, I know my answer. I want well, to please know start. Your yeah, I have to think about it, but you, yeah. it's, it's too the, complicated. The answer is money. Well, I mean that's the, too simple. I mean you know that. Oh, I, I can expand. The answer please, is please. The answer is a thousand percent money. So, you have a combination of a revolution in music technology to where music is not only digital but it is streamed and how it is delivered to people is not curated by a human DJ, but by an algorithm. So that's point one. Point two. Yeah, what? No, that's also not true, terrible, by the way. It was terrible. never curated by DJs, but by A&Rs. But let's go that, oh, okay, back okay. to that. Okay. Program directors. Okay. My, yeah. my, my apologies. That was too far. That was too far back. A long time ago it was DJs, but that was, that was yeah, too like far back. A, 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 mm. but still, still people. People were in charge. Okay, so we have an algorithm distributing digital music M digital music that is way easier to produce now than but it was that then. has actually expanded the, the, the diversity that has broadened hold on hold on, hold on. Let me, the, let me finish. We're, we're, the algorithm we're, we're, actually has done the better job than humans as far as i'm concerned seems like it's hold on, hold on, hold on. let me finish let me finish the idea let me finish yeah, let's, the let idea. Him, let's let him land okay. so no. you, you have, you have, <laughs> Sorry. You have an algorithm choosing um who who gets served what and that also um be, the person in charge of the algorithm does definitely weight the scales somewhat. Um, having said that, you also have um, companies who need to promise more to their investors because they're pro because they are public companies. Mm -hmm. Them talking specifically about the labels and publishing companies. These are not. Oh, I'm I'm fucking rich man. I own these things because I want to help cultivate music. They are a business first, mm -hmm. and they have food. Uh, fiduciary responsibilities to the people who invest in their company, whether that's like fucking board members or st like stock market shareholders. No. So they have to make projections and a company doesn't get invested in if they don't keep growing. What's the most secure way of ensuring the company keeps growing so we can get more investment money? Well, what worked before? Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's and that's where you make it much less about what emotion do I feel right this moment that I feel can communicate to other people and you reduce it down to what is going to appeal to the most people so that an algorithm knows to share this with as many people as possible and it's as safe as possible so it's like just slightly different but not that different it's safe so it's low risk for the audience to get invested in. And that's why it's boring as fuck. Low risk for the investor too. What's the opposite that? of punk. Low risk for the investor as yeah, well. It, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's 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 reducing the risk, which is part of what makes music and frankly art, art so so fucking exciting. Art, yeah. And I think that's that's what I was getting at more specifically. Yeah, I mean, well, we agree on there, but like on the business, the money, money being the fundamental issue, I think we we have a disagreement there. I, I'm a lefty. I would love to say that money is the root of all evil, but I just oh, I'm not. I'm not saying. Can. I'm not saying that. Maybe, maybe I was too reductive with money. I should say uh, business growth. I think that's that's the problem. That's yeah, lack of risk taking because we have business growth in front of our very eyes every day when we read the news that is based on the biggest possible risk that look at tesla look at like guys like chamath palihapitiya to like look to at these fair, guys to be fair to tesla he did like elon got a shitload of subsidies out of that yeah, too. not so. once again the lefty here yes absolutely but 
still risk taking. I would like, you know, I, I, I often, I often take <laughs> G, uh, Steve G. <laughs> Steve Jobs as G Stobbs. Jesus. Memobs. Memobs. Bebops. Bebops. I often I often uh quote Steve Jobs on things because he's been like more punk attitude than most of like kind close of to one hundred percent of like music A and R. kind kind of oh. an asshole, but I would definitely give him the punk label for sure. He, right, but he like, thought outside I, the he, box. He was probably an ass. I don't know anything about him, but like his quotes are so great. Oh fuck yeah! Like, <laughs> like the, the dude knows how like to market be a research. For, this is like how does this not apply to art? So uh, he was saying that you know somebody asked like, back in the eighties, like somebody asked Steve Jobs if they do like market study, market research, and Steve Jobs went like straight up like, why would we do that? Like. They don't know what they want. We have to tell them what they want. Like, how is that this not applicable to oh. art? We should not the tech guy should be saying that. We should be saying that. <laughs> that, that, you know puts, what I mean? that puts me in a weird, like a weird philosophical precipice. Like on one hand, I I agree, but on the second, on the other hand, as as a consumer who wants to be self empowered, I don't want to be told what I want. No, but I mean, mean sure. I, well, fair they're, they're, but they're not coercing you. Well, yeah, so oh, sorry, it's not so, still still. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah, well, I but I, I I'm telling. Uh, let's say I'm coming up with a new musical idea that is so extraordinary that nobody has heard it before, and it's my idea. I bring it yeah. to the marketplace. You didn't. You didn't take I it from the market. I didn't freaking ask giving, someone like, yeah. "What would you like to possibly hear today?" Yeah. You know, I was yeah. like. This is my like. Look at my junk. <laughs> you know, that's it. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like that's the attitude. I'm just suck, trying to read. Suck my dick, right? Bigot. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get to the attitude. <laughs> that there's a because I think that's where we actually can we can we can found a common tone here. Totally. Attitude or the lack thereof actually is yeah. like where's the attitude? You can you can curse on your pop song, sure, but is that like indicative of attitude? No, I don't think so. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, a be yeah. beautiful example of this. Um, the number one song on Spotify right now globally is Unholy by Sam Smith. Mm. And I did, Sermon, a quick, I, did, I did a quick Google on it because I was curious as to what the lyrics were because I couldn't understand them very well. Like, just audibly, like, audibly couldn't. Is that the one that's like... Da, 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 da. Da yeah, da super, da super Jewish. Doing yeah. something unholy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that one. Middle Eastern. Um, <laughs> the body shop. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, I, that, yeah, I, that's, I that was pretty upon, cool. I think. I I love that. Wait, fucking, let me that, finish yeah. the goddamn sorry, thought. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, bro. <laughs> okay, so fucking, um, so I like one of the things that popped up was a Variety article, and it was like how Sam Smith and whoever the fuck the the lady was uh, made a, a queer anthem. I'm like. There's nothing about these lyrics that are queer in the least, but okay. <laughs> so I read through it, and it was just a whole. I mean, it was a whole bunch. It wasn't. It wasn't news. It's fucking publication fellatio. Right. And I was thinking to myself, they're they're trying to paint this so hard, as like, oh, we're going against the system. Apparently, uh, what the fuck's her name? Some something Petra. I forget. I forget. Her Doesn't first matter. Name. Par <laughs> apparently she. Apparently she's trans. And apparently this is like her her breakout song with with Sam and like fucking good for yeah, her. Yeah, but at least they had some other chords than A minor C G, dude. Yeah. Like uh, that's already uh, quite it's something actually, in twenty twenty two. As far man. as I know, it's a yeah. it's a two or three chord song, but it's just a different mode. But it's not. I don't think there's even chords. But if there is, like it it would be two. There, there's a, there's, impli <laughs> there's, a, there's implied chords. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but two it, is the it, number. It, either it's, way, it's, fucking yeah, it's not as modally scale. Okay, that's, that's not the point. Like getting back right. to your point of attitude, like they tried with this variety article to plaster attitude onto it with this oh well both of them are lgbt identifying so we'll unfortunately use, so, that's so, not so enough we'll use, but so no. we'll, yeah yeah so we'll use that i'm mm. just like well fucking how about we divorce your bullshit fellating for a second and just take the art on its face no uh the art on its face i think is enjoyable i wouldn't say it's I mean, it sounds for, fantastic. For, 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 sounds for, yeah. fucking for, fantastic. For, for, for pop in the last three years, I guess it's technically risky, but for any other context, it's not super risky. But it's fun. I'll give it that. Lyrically, I I hate it, dude. I, I can I can I okay. But like, the, 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 I, there's no attitude. I would be you know? well. I think I I don't I don't I don't agree with that. Uh, to, okay. to me, like for, if I would be, and I don't say this often. I I don't 
like most of the top 40 stuff but or haven't in the last decade for sure but so i if if i would have been involved with that song i would be like ultra super proud of it i i in in, oh, in, okay. not in obviously in, in the current from, time from, yeah from, sure from a production aspect delicious absolutely delicious. and even the attitude aspect if you look at the a minor fcg situation which is like have it has been so disgusting <laughs> like every song is really that you know and and now we're finally breaking out of that in the top 40 which is lovely um and and all the the edm that's still happening in europe and all that so you know that song i would be very very i i i actually enjoy listening to listening to it and i think it's gonna be one of my favorite pop um, songs and not least because the mix is fabulous with, but with you know the what exception, i mean with the exception of mariah carey's all i want for christmas <laughs> oh, that, that, that that was that was the uh that was the most exciting song on the list was it, it looks mariah like he's sorry it looks like the lyrics he's talking about some uh, a guy who's closeted uh, or a person who's closeted gay how how seemingly, do, how uh, do you get that? Seemingly a guy who has a wife or a girlfriend, and he's he definitely gay. has a wife or, or a girlfriend. Yeah. Hmm. but he's going to fuck a girl at at the body, whatever the fuck the body shop is. I, I, obviously, we know what the body shop is. Are you serious? I Please, don't know what the body I, shop I, is. I don't. I'm, I don't either. A place where people fuck or something. Oh, like okay, a, cool. Like yeah, just a place where I, mean, you, I was, I was thinking you, like this man is a mechanic and he works in a, so garage. Funny that, he owns the, a garage. It's so funny that it's so funny that we, we talk Dude. about we talk about fucking Gosh. in the pop culture more than ever before. We fuck less. That's the funniest thing, by the way. Did you yeah. you, you read about this shit? It's because it's because of fucking we we don't like taking risk and it's more fun. Yes, yeah, man. Okay, <laughs> to the, the let's estro, put on the productive gear. So, estrogenization of the how do males. how do we how do we get more risk taking in 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 popular art? We should fuck right now. <laughs> that is not a bad idea. <laughs> we should do something unholy. Yeah, we should do something. Yeah. We should be on. We are so on. How do you get risk taking in art? It's, you, you, I mean, you, okay, you, dude. You need I mean, to be he's, un, unabashedly yourself. This, this, this is. I mean, this is. This is kind of lyrically risky, though. I mean, is it? What's risk? What's risky about talking about cheating on your wife? That has been done a bajillion fucking times. Yeah, but they're celebrating the 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 uncloseting of the person. And, Where's and, the closeted portion in here? Uh, where, where, where? I mean, besides, like, besides, okay, they have a girlfriend. It's a mommy man. And don't they have... know, daddy's getting hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the mom, body yeah, shop. Mom, yeah, mommy doing something unholy. That doesn't qualifying mean anything. The, cheating, cheating, cheating on your wife is unholy by definition. She'd kick you. <laughs> Dude, a lucky, lucky of, girl. She got ass. married to a boy like you. She'd kick you out if she ever knew, ever mm. knew about all the. You tell me what. Uh, you tell me that you do. Dirty, dirty boy. Yeah, that, that's that just that's not obvious. He could be fucking a lady, and it all works exactly the same. Mm. Well, oh, I see what you're saying. That's what that's what I mean. <laughs> like, like I read the lyrics first, and then I read this. I read the fucking article, and I'm just like, this is not specifically queer at all, not even remotely. Yeah, but I mean, I don't care if it's queer especially, or not. Especially, especially if you scroll down and go to you're Kim, right, you're right, Kim, you're what's right. her faces. I didn't know Kim what's her face or is it like Kim is it Kim Petrus? I don't know. Petr something Petrus. Petrus, yeah. Um her her whole thing is from the perspective of a woman. So even if we're going with the trans agenda, he's still technically not gay. He's just fucking a, oh, a sure. tranny. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> Okay, go figure, but I I'm all happy with all that. That's great. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. thinking about this politically at all. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm just saying, like, I'm I know, gonna, I but like, an example we get to that very quickly, and that's so not interesting. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but um, musically, I think that's th that particular song was a, uh, you know, it was a little beacon in the dark for a while. I, it was a fun song. It's still it's number a, one on Spotify. A good, f that's wild. It, it earn, it's earned it. I mean, in, as far as I'm concerned, just yeah. Im imagine, imagine that little bit of variance is like. The, the most refreshing thing in the world. Right, but that's you also know? the that's that's <laughs> also the pop art. That's also it's the pop kinda, art. The more I think about it, actually, it's weird because if they're <clears throat> because if it's supposed to be risky and if it were queer, 
if it were to do with queerness in general or gayness, would it still be risky anyway? It wouldn't be on un- then the unholy then qualifying the the act. Yeah, if there's it were a, log- a gay act. There's a logic unholy, logic problem. Is, is like it is anti it is anti Christian, but they're talking about <clears throat> cheating, which if hopefully they're not celebrating, right? So. Mm. Yeah, no, like it, we, we, it's we definitely because it's, un- it's good know. that it's unholy, but it's but it's not good because they're cheating. So yeah, it's actually kind of we, we definitely do not know if they are indeed celebrating it or not. That that is not detailed. I think I think they left that open to interpretation. My, myself, somebody somebody's celebrating it for sure. I would think Sorry, a gay. Doubt, yeah. I, I typically would think a, a gay person calling something unholy is like an act of defiance, Re- rebellion. Yeah, yeah. Ag- against. Um, against tyrannical, you know, tyrannical Christian right or something, hmm. some some type, of, some type of theocratic notion, and hmm. but then they're cheating, so it's like, yeah, I don't know, yeah, that, it does strike me as kind of kind it, of poisonous. It, I mean, it, <laughs> it's, it's definitely poisonous. what do you say, toxic? Yeah, it, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's definitely poisonous, That's but it's not remotely like as melody. bad as a bunch of other shit. <laughs> Surely it, not. I, I would actually say on on the um, on the top five that I listened to. It was the most toxic, but compared to a lot of other shit that's out there, it wasn't nearly as bad still. Mm. Like, uh, okay, so here's a question. Um, Taylor Swift's new album. Didn't have time to check it out yet. Oh, fuck. All right. Fair enough. Yeah, like, I listened to it. What What do you What do you think? Yeah, I, was, I thought it was boring. Really? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was good. Uh, some of the lyrics were really good, and, and the main song, the one single. The anti-hero thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That was the only one that I thought was worth it. Um, the rest of there, it, there was as the, a producer, was I was underwhelmed by the production. The, the as a mixer, song. I was underwhelmed by the mix. The, uh, the, I love, I love her though. I love Nights in Yeah, me too. I love that yeah. record. The, the, one the, that Max the anti-hero did a bunch song of was the one that had the most, like music, like music without the lyrics, um, the most chipper uh, Taylor Swift stuff that we're like most used to. But the rest of the the rest of the album wasn't super chipper. It was it was pretty restrained. That's actually like I didn't really enjoy the album, but I didn't hate it by any means. Mm. Um, yeah, I, the, I, the I, thing, I'm just saying I was bored. I didn't say the, I was offended or yeah. Like the, the thing that I was refreshed by was that normally her music is like like streamlining, like straight in your fucking vein, <laughs> a pic, a pixie stick. Yeah, you know, it's like raw raw sugar all the time. And this was not that, and that was kind of refreshing. But I would agree, like the sonic, just the sonic picture, the sonic soundscape could have just been so much. How about so harmonies? I didn't have chance chance to hear it, but how about harmonies and stuff like that? Like, was just there anything alien. pretty pretty only, pretty? Oh, okay, pretty, so that's boring. Pretty, that's just so boring. Alien, yeah. so, pretty, I'm so sorry. Pretty Horrible. usual, yeah. yeah. Like, right. and, 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 and like because of the restraint too. She wasn't going like super ham on trying to get the really catchy mm. melodies, which complemented the music. But you know, it's not, it's not going to be like, oh, you know. It was just very awkwardly under arranged and produced to me. It was yes, uh, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah, it was just, it sounded like demos. Honestly, it's something sounded like song demos, really? like a person with a laptop. They're like, I kind of program a beat with like boom on Pro Tools, hmm. and then I'm gonna put a bass in like a pad, like, and that's that's all the instruments. Yeah. And then the, will, and then stack say, vocals, though. and like use a retro reverb on the vocal, and like that's, that's the it. sound. It's mm. it's kind of like a, um, it's kind of like a late, uh, '80s early '90s uh, synth pop thing. Like it, it Ish. sounds retro ish. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I will also say, like, in context of Taylor Swift, this is the most genuine I've heard her that I can remember. Mm. Th- this doesn't feel overly contrived. There's still there's still bits of contrivances from my own ear, but like this this actually like like a lot of people praised folklore. They loved it. Like, oh, she's going back to her roots. I'm like, this is just more pop, but they're but they're giving it the the folk. Uh, dressing, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, it's, yeah. it's still just pop music. Uh, but yeah. I liked her old. I liked her old stuff too. I thought it was good. Um, yeah, me too. I like the love song is is a <clears throat> catchy, cute little love story song. Yeah, style destroys. Mm. That song Max Martin did. Yeah, that's you know song style. Yeah, sure. Fucking, d- I love that song. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean to be that guy. I need to piss. I need to piss. But on a positive note, I have to say now that yeah. I am really looking forward to what this current decade will bring into top 40 
Dude, I'm, okay. I'm hopeful and I'm because now really we're, we're getting to see the effect the actual effect of streaming the first time if you look yeah. at like 10 year periods we're gonna see the cool that we were talking about the bad sides of you know or the p potential hypothetical you know why why things are you know less diversified and shitty and all yeah. that I think there's a chance, you know, that now when we have less people in the industry, like holding on to their, you know, crony positions and all that, and the algorithm is at least taking some of the workload, we're going to see people hearing more diverse music. I think and so. We, we are seeing evidence for that, that already. That, yeah. that has already been happening without a doubt for, for like multiple different reasons. Mm. Because the, the Spotify algorithm or algorithms feed you what you tell it so mm -hmm. if you tell it i want top 40 it's gonna give you more but it top is 40. funny because already i was one of the people who were actually invited to use spotify in 2007 oh, wow. it was an invitation only service <coughs> wow. and it was like obviously unbelievable at that time like facebook had barely surfaced and so and already like I don't remember it was really like maybe it was already back then but really close to that time when when I started using it they their um the weekly recommendations were like miraculously on point and they have ever since been miraculously on point and even if I and I, I listen to obviously as a as a professional I listen to all kinds of references and all kinds of music that I actually don't enjoy listening to on my private time and all that stuff yeah seems to somehow magically just filter that stuff out and my recommendations are still mainly african-american music that i love listening to Spot at home when i'm Spotify's cooking algorithm it's has, like it's not been a, a secret to success it's a meta of super algorithm it's yeah. some some crazy algorithm that is just better and i don't know how that's even possible Un but it's undeniably the best it's, undeniably. it's ridiculous I think, I, th I think there are, there's a trade-off though like you know in all things where when you have a radio station and you have a program director and you have people there deciding what the listeners are subjected to and they don't get to choose all of it sometimes they'll hear something that isn't what they would normally go for but that they like and hence and therefore their taste will expand or something and that's great and you don't you're not going to get that with an algorithm that's just showing you more of what you already like. Sure. If you if you program the algorithm to behave that way, yeah, that's it, the thing. But plus, how about sure. a, how about a hybrid where you have a, a human curation and algorithm working together? I think Spotify is doing that actually. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. So I mean, that in, in multiple explain. different ways. Yeah, but playlists, so, right? Well, playlists, but also really on on the on the I would I would guess on a on a deeper like integrated yep. level, but. But any, anyway, so that has been on point all the time, and I have no, you know, like I, every week, if only I would have the time to actually go through the entire thing every week, but every week I find new stuff that I actually, like, click the heart, you know? Yeah, me too. Wow. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's insane. Yeah. And it's, it, it, it really, it really, really enriches my life. Me too, man. Yeah. Wow. That, that's, that's surprising but awesome to hear. Like Zolpidem. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like like what sleeping pill I feel like I'm I feel like I'm I have some really bad listening habits in the fact that like I'll find one song and I'll like obsess over it for a while mm. and I don't know why that is but I'm sure it has something to do with some type of cognitive dissonance. Uh, me too. I, I do the same thing. I, I was listening to Zen Zen that North Lane from song? Nor yeah. North Lane like on repeat for like that three days just destroys 25 yeah. times per day yeah that sounds so, so no good. problem and it still it still yeah. works for you on spotify like the algorithm and everything it still plays me uh, uh american black music which is what i want it to play to me yeah oh, okay, it, okay. it doesn't play any metal to me because i don't want to discover the new a minor song yeah. i want to discover i want to in terms of metal i want to talk to guys like you too, for example, yeah. who are in more into that, and then like discover music that show way. You stuff that's not just because it has, for me it has to be ultra curated because mm -hmm. I'm not a metal fan. Mm -hmm. I'm not any fan per se. Well, I'm a jazz fan. Let's let's be honest. I'm a jazz fan. Mm -hmm. So, but anything else like any jazz that is like above the level of like professional and good, I'm gonna be like hell yeah, this is great. Mm -hmm. But any metal, 
<sighs> not really. Mm-hmm. You know? No, I understand. Fuck, I mean, fuck. Like, I, if I, it I, sounds great or if it's, think, the song is great, but if it's just boring, then I'm going to be like, I don't care. I think most I mean, metal totally fans have, have pretty low standards for the record. <laughs> 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 and I'm a metal fan. But um, that, that, that that's actually brings up an interesting point in that sense because I feel like I like my music like I like my women. I I get down with many different varieties but I'm extremely picky <laughs> that's, funny. That's, that's that's how I would describe it and and like that's also where I feel like at least Spotify's current algorithm probably wouldn't serve me as well well that mm. also, that and also I've polluted Spotify's algorithm with my current account because I use it while I stream mm. and when I stream I stream fucking everything I can't find on YouTube yeah. you know so at that point, I don't know what it's going to give me. That's not Spotify's fault. That's, that's you know, my end. But I'd, I'd be curious to know um, why, like, how how Spotify would serve me in, in a completely isolated environment. I'd be curious. Mm. I'd have to try that sometime. Maybe that'd be a good experiment. <clears throat> I think Spotify and streaming generally is just a major asset the good, like the best thing that happened to music probably and we're gonna only see it later yeah. on that's a bold statement I think I mean, it is too I'd, oh I'd, we're cutting I'd, the middleman like I'd, 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 we're not fighting against gatekeepers we can make a song Spot, Spotify's still a gatekeeper they're still yeah they are yeah I'm not saying that but, they but, are but, but we're cutting away a lot I can them. syndicate my music worldwide for free for, 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 you, for, basically yeah. for you, free you can, yeah. you can but that doesn't guarantee you access no, but I mean, anyone that has Spotify anywhere in the world can go and listen to my song. Yes. That, that Which is, is that unheard is of. Yeah. That, that is huge. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems commonplace to us today. Like, why isn't your, like, if like if someone published a song, you'd be like, why isn't your song on fucking Spotify? Well, well the thing is, like, if you, you know like I mean? capitalism yeah. at all, then you would have to love Spotify, because that's kind of like what it's doing. I mean, I, I do like capitalism, and I don't know that I love Spotify, but I mean, it's, it's very clearly been... Uh, a major boon, without a doubt. I mean, but also, it, don't get me wrong. I'm not like a, like Spotify is the best. Like they have their crony. They, they got their problems. Yeah. They Everybody's problems. got you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that at all, actually, and especially from the songwriter's perspective, not in the least. But mm, but mm-hmm. what I am saying that you know, we we tune these things, we refine them. The yes. idea, the idea is, the idea is phenomenal. Yeah. I'll it's agree, not like, agree with that. And also, yeah. it's not like. You know, it's like a you know Amazon bookstore. You know, it's not like even the idea isn't. It's it's, you know, it's not like shooting a rocket in the space. You know, it's it it's not that level. Of, you know, like streaming is like kind of like well, it's a no brainer actually with you know yeah. today's technology and you know it's not even on an idea level. It's not like crazy, back, but it's just back, like back in it's going to enable us to make great art and take take those risks. Back in yeah, 2007, yeah. I don't know if it was a no-brainer, yeah. honestly. Just because of, like, like YouTube isn't a no-brainer still, only because YouTube doesn't make any fucking money. But the music, you know what I mean? yeah, music <laughs> business is the most exclusive business out there, if you think about even, it. Like, even more exclusive they talk than about, film? They took a, they, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe so, they're okay, more. Sec, but, like, sec, they, they talk about inclus- inclusivity 24-7. And oh, they're my the God. Most <laughs> exclusive <laughs> business yes so like th- th- this is this was, yeah and you know remember when steve jobs once again like started to do this you know like ipod and you know itunes thing you know in the turn of the, the you know 2000 this was like the record labels were already like 10 years behind their time oh yeah and and they will always be because it's it's a business model based on not the, the opposite of innovation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so they just hold on to their rights and all that, and then they try to keep their jobs as, for as long as possible and just not get kicked out of it. You know, it's just like the, the opposite of anything progressive. And then obviously the marketing side of it is the opposite. So, <laughs> it, it, so you know, I think Spotify and not Spotify, but all the streaming. You know, the better they pay for artists and songwriters, the better. Obviously, but yeah. like streaming is the thing. Obviously, and it was the thing. It should have been a thing already in the '90s, and it's gonna be good for you us so? content creators. Yeah. Oh, okay. At the end of the day, it is a net positive for your average person who wants to publish music. That is and un- the undeniable. consumer for 
Oh, fuck for, yeah. So everybody wins. Dude, imagine, I mean, like, I remember when I was in high school, and I know this is, I'm probably one of the rare cases who, uh, as a music lover, not just musician, but in high school, um, every week, there was like, a, I was a huge power metal nerd. And what do you mean was? And, <laughs> no, dude, back then it was the only music I accepted as, <laughs> as music. <laughs> Everything that literally like it was the only acceptable form of music, and everything else was, was, was and it had yeah it, it had to be power metal and uh, for years right for years I was this way you're the and, king dude dude and and fucking there was a one website that I would every week I would order CDs mm. from and I would just wait like you know just. Check in the mailbox every day. I know the, the feeling. The, the CDs come yet, and then I would obsess. I would, I would break out the, and I always spent like the ridiculous. Like I'd always get the deluxe with the, with the whole handbook and the story. I, I couldn't afford fucking, that, but I was like that with Chick Corea's records. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and I'd see, but I would, I would do, I would obsess over getting the music, putting it on. I would do nothing but I'd put the CD and I would listen to it, read the lyrics, and look at the art, and uh, I, I mean, you know. The amount of money I spent on at that time, and it was my parents. I didn't pay for it myself. Right. I didn't have a job. Mm. You know, like whatever. It was super lucky, but yeah. um, but I, it was a lot of money spent. Like I obviously my parents weren't gonna finance me spending like seven hundred dollars a week on music, but I got to buy albums every week and That's order them online, or maybe go to the store. <laughs> Every week that I saw my, my parents were divorced, I'd see my dad every couple of weeks, and we would always go to Borders, and he would buy me a couple of CDs, I'd, you know, and, uh, but now, it's like... Oh, merciful fate, here you go, <laughs> son. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I oh, know, yeah. I know. Yeah, man, and, uh, uh, well, my dad didn't know anything about metal, he didn't listen to metal, but, uh, um, but, yeah, I mean, nowadays, we, I mean, I don't, I, I, I pay... You know the ten bucks or whatever a month it is, and have access to all the music on Earth. Yeah. I don't have to don't have to buy any CDs. Mm. I don't clutter up my space with like you know discs, and I kind of miss that in a way. But um, that's funny. But it helps me kind of like cut through and get to just the quality mm. because a lot of times when you put all this, you invest all this time into researching the music, finding. You know, on the internet, like at the time, it was like you had to find clips on the internet of yeah. the songs, yeah. right? Yeah. And they'd be on like the band's website, maybe. Yeah. And you'd have to decide what to spend your money on, and then you'd get it, and you'd have to you listen to the whole record. And, you know, because you had like, you got those CDs that week, like, you'd probably like tolerate the songs that weren't the best. Yeah. And you'd, then you'd find a way to love them. You'd find a way to love them a lot of super times. Super important. Yeah. Super important. It would. But now, like, I don't make excuses for, for music. You know, I'm just like we are uh, listen to an album. Incredibly privileged songs, listeners in the 21st yeah, century. Yeah, and there's two I like. I'm not, I've removed the other eight from the playlist that I add to my playlist that I listen to, and yeah. I've removed the other ones, and I usually don't listen to them again unless I don't know for whatever reason someone it's like, oh, you missed one. This one's yeah. awesome. Nostalgia. Whatever. But yeah, it's it's a. Uh, I can't imagine what my life would be like now if I had had the access back <clears> then <throat> that I have now. To different artists and music, you know, like it's, mm. I, I might have different taste, For sure, without a doubt, you know, undeniably, like because like I, I was when I was into power metal, I wasn't I wasn't seeking out other genres, and the website that I bought my music from only was like it specialized in uh, in power metal. It's mm. called Altamira. It was only <laughs> the only he was, he's like the power metal guy. Like he said, "All right, we get it. You fucking you fat the power metal. We get it." <laughs> but I, I do like no, but I didn't have access to even hearing other music. Mm. Is the thing, and had I had something like Spotify, it it likely would have informed my growth and in my in my taste in a way that you know, I just can't imagine. You know, informed and my growth would have made taste. me a different musician, maybe. You right, know? but the record store, the record store. You know, hanging out at the record store culture. I, this I grew type up in the of, middle of nowhere. That, that was wasn't fun, an option man. for me. Yeah, but so so I was really afraid when the streaming started taking off, and you know, even before that, when you know the 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 downloads, digital downloads, started to happen. 
I, I was like, okay, so is this the end of going with my friends to like record stores? Yes. And 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 I was like afraid of it, and now I'm like embracing it. Like not, mm -hmm. I mean, I love the hang. Obviously, social aspect is going yeah. away all the time. Somehow, the internet is just taking that away in ways and shapes and forms we can't even understand. But, but the the um the the record store thing was so cool we would just go and you know it would be so difficult you would have to share the headphones with your friend yeah. and it would, you know all this kind of shit but 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 that was a thing and i was really afraid when when obviously that's not a thing anymore you know what would replace it and now we have this we can share instantaneously all these not clips but full songs playlists we can play yeah. play Albums, anyone can make everything. any number of playlists and share them and if they're great they just became a dj <laughs> you know yeah, yeah yeah um you know this 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 stuff is just unbelievably cool and but but one thing that i i i remember i have a friend in finland we were talking about this back in the time you know and it, it, what what makes that you know some new song or new you discover something what makes it special you know it's almost like a secret in the little group that you have you talk with each other about this song and it's like we found this song and it's so great and we have this like this is our thing mm -hmm. you know it still exists without a doubt well yeah i mean a lot of it has to do with um a, a huge part of what makes a song meaningful to someone is the moment in which you're sharing with someone else mm. or just the moment you're having yourself like whatever whatever level or type of catharsis you're having and that emotion that the music is giving you gets associated with that memory but like und undeniably um, i think that's why when we're tiny people that's why our our music taste is so informed by that as as we grow older but that's actually i wanted to push back on what you were saying just slightly mm. um i what you're talking about with like we can share songs instantly and like we can like over text or even like over video or mm. whatever like get instant feedback on like oh that's really cool like fucking oh it's awesome thanks for sharing it's still not exactly the same <clears throat> no, no, as no. being in person and that's also one of the reasons why yeah. i i kind of put my foot down about keeping the podcast in person is because this is thank, way, thank, way, thank you that's way, a great idea <laughs> way, way better way better than zoom hands down you know but, i mean i'm on i'm 100 but that that still even in this day and age doesn't preclude that you can't do like they did in the 70s and throw on a couple albums or in this case put on a fucking spotify playlist mm. and just listen with some friends no. But that's but it is disappearing, and I'm not sure why it's disappearing. But it, it is, and I, I it, like I feel like that would be such a beautiful thing to come back. It's such a beautiful experience to share sound with your with most your of friends. the internet seems to be separating us rather than bringing us together across yeah, it's bringing us together in these ways that just at least not physically that, that, that's for sure. That just well, physically is the only thing that matters. The worst of each other uh, in ourselves. Yeah, like the whole reason that Sam Harris. Uh, 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 Still on about Sam Harris. Quit, quit, uh, quit, <laughs> quit, quit Twitter. Even, even after yeah. he, even yeah. after he retreated from Twitter. No. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, this is making me a worse person. It's making me see the worst in everyone else. Right, but but coming Fuck back to shit. the point, the in-person yeah, social contact—that's everything. And and, and mm. it's you know for me, it's the most fun dude. When we're drunk and you show me a song, and we're just so into like it's the best time ever yeah that's and, the best time but yeah. also when we're sober when we're working we get a fuck ton of shit done yeah in a shorter period of time than if we would be on dropbox you know separated yeah, even yeah. we even with zooms and all the modern bells and, and whistles and the fucking the the fulfilling part on top of that emotionally you guys are way more fulfilled in person mm -hmm. uh, yeah way but more. that all goes without saying and this is this is something that you know it's easy to fucking be here and say like we're all fucking doing youtube or whatever but like <laughs> but, but but you know but, but um i would really love to still have budgets like we had back in the day when we Holy just went into studios oh, and yeah. we had SSLs and we would have 20 people there three, and we would just three, like three make months, records for three, fuck's sake. Three yeah. months and it's like a fucking retreat. Yeah, you know well, what I mean? well, let's say yeah. three days. 
Like I would be happy with that. You know, yeah, like yeah, we yeah. would. We, you know, if 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 a record would have like a you know what we you know drum session in a studio and bass and guitars, we would do in a proper studio and then overdubs at home. I would be happy with that. But it's or like fucking Dark Side of the Moon, where they took like a week to figure out one sound and one part of the record. <laughs> we have these stories, shit. like Eric Johnson's <laughs> took I mean, for five years to yeah. make. Like, you know, whatever. But like <laughs> it's like this, you know this, I mean. this song that I'm about to put out took us a year. <laughs> okay, okay. That wasn't like a year uncut just That's dedicated true. Yeah, to in, that. Yeah, at, at Westlake. You know, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know what I mean? Like these sessions where people come together and they play together and they have, they bounce ideas and all that, that just really doesn't have. I mean, bands do that. Band, mm. Bands, they, they rehearse and then they maybe even record together. But imagine even that facility, like you would have a, a proper recording studio and the band would just be separated from that infrastructure. They would just arrive there. Then they would have the production, you know, that would be separated. They wouldn't have to mic their own snare drums, you know, and all that. That was just a fun time when that was happening. Yeah. It was so much fun because it was obvious. Obviously, there was uh, pressure and all that, but... In the same okay. time, like, now nowadays, miking a snare drum is just to make your drummer feel better, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or so, show it off on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. because that's, that's not on the record. Yeah, but yeah. you know what I mean. Like that, I, I, I truly, really, really miss that time from the production side. Like, like the, even though it, there was pressure and money and all that, but like the, the fact that you had a bunch of people together at the same time, in the same room. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know maybe the pressure actually even enhanced it in some way because yeah. you you felt more professional. You had to actually deliver and all yeah. that. And you, you know you that's that's the thing. You I didn't missed. have time yeah. to wonder. You you had to go with your gut and fucking pick. No, something. and everybody had to trust each other because everybody too, was yeah. you know yeah. kind of like we we need to do this together. Yeah, and the chain of command also chain of command horrible freaking expression. But still, like you know everybody knows what they are doing. And you know it's like not necessarily chain of command. You know what? Like, like yeah, I know what separation mean, yeah. of different disciplines. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, fucking. A. So like, I, I'm just so happy and and thankful that I got to 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 witness that professionally, because I it was barely there. Like when when I started my career, I was doing maybe you know five five seven years of you know working in the industry like that and then it started being on Dropbox pretty much exclusively. Wow. I've I've never seen anything remotely close to that. I've heard a lot of stories about it. But like I guess like the closest thing I had and this is not professional at all, but was like in college, you know, you have your little groups of like people, you gotta work on a fucking audio project. It's gonna sound like shit regardless. <laughs> but you well, fair enough I started we, in, in, we had a lot of time like that at Berkeley, yeah. Oh. We, we we everyone everyone vying for uh, for like control room A, <laughs> trying to, like, yeah, yeah. St staying up like staying up all night just to get the first spot in line to book the studio you wanted. Yeah, and then you'd get your sh shitty fucking uh, like emo core bands. <laughs> <laughs> with Goes without saying. We actually we actually won the battle of the bands. With that fuck, we were called Bleed Audio. Uh, <laughs> oh my! Uh, yes. Uh, the yes. That's your that's your plug-in company when you finally have the balls to be. Oh, I wanna, can we? That is your plug-in company. Can we company, do Bleed anything audio. with that name? Yeah, <laughs> just uh, phenomenal, yeah. man. But I mean, it's fun. So that that's what I'm missing. But that not not because of the facilities or you know the the prestige or anything like that, but because of the social aspect. Yeah, I don't absolutely. care. You know, we can have a studio. We can have a home studio set up or Cut whatever. Sorry. Yeah. Um, thanks. Yuka, thank you so much can for you, bringing the beer, brother. Andrew, thank oh, yeah. you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'll have one more. Be careful. Be, be careful. Yeah, I didn't throw it this time, so it should be. Yeah, fine. it wasn't wasn't thrown, but I did feel a little ch chink when I handed no, it to I, Casey. No, actually, yeah. I can have one more, maybe. But yeah, yeah you should you should sugar. have one more. Yeah. So, no. Thanks for ha having me on. Really, actually, dude, absolutely. Fuck We're yeah. not even done yet. Hopefully, uh, dude. Yeah. I, I mean, willing, <clears throat> willing to go as long as you want. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I mean, if, but, it, if there's any dead shitty space, we can edit that out. It's yeah. Fine. I, I, I just wanted to bring that, that point, the social point, but also like how it used to be point, because it it was so cool because that was 
that was that was like a hundred percent of how records were done. Yeah, I've had so much success in in with both approaches throughout my career. Like I've de- I I feel and I I mean you know in in my biased way and every artist likely agrees that the newest thing they're doing is the best thing they've ever done. Sure. Right. But I do feel that way. <laughs> Yet I feel that I still can't help but feel that way, and I think a lot of it has has had to do with the fact that. Um, up until now when I'm bringing like when I'm bringing when I'm finishing a piece like I'm always the bottleneck maybe I'll co-write something with someone but when it comes to getting it finished it's me alone in a room yeah and a thousand percent you and I are not doing it that way it's us like tomorrow we're mixing a song together Mm -hmm. right I've never done that before I can't wait and I've mixed together with, with others like it's super rare and i normally would not opt to do that they wouldn't recommend it yeah that's not a good idea but i know that we can do it because we have some i don't know what you know we're just yeah. some you know we can gay husbands yeah you guys say, must yeah. be that you, you must guys, be that you guys have both have uh both male and female parts <laughs> It's yeah, just like interlocking. No, it's just like, <laughs> it was wild though. Like we did it. Like we kind of did a little bit of that last week, mm. and it was going so well. We were like, "Yeah, we can do this. We'd we'd probably be a good mixing team." And so super just, rare. Like yeah, Jimmy Jam and Terry yeah. Lewis. That's the only fucking team that com- comes to my mind. Yeah, like they were in the eighties. <laughs> Man, yeah, like Mike Shipley uh, and uh, Mutt Lang mixed together. Okay. I didn't know that. Some of my best re- favorite sounding records. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Freaking hell, hell, yeah. Yeah, and like, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's You just have to you just have to find someone who has the same, um, who obsesses over the same things and, and enjoys obsessing over Plus, them. you have to have somebody who has the king's patience. Yeah. It's all about that. Yeah, bo- which both of us patience, do for that, yeah. I yeah. think. Yep. Yeah, because, I mean, we're putting this art, this art out into the world as... as as a representative of the best versions of ourselves and what we think the world needs to hear. Mm. And I have nothing but infinite patience for getting that right, as you've seen. Yeah, right? yeah, sure. Maybe sometimes often people will tell me it's to it's to my detriment that yeah, I'll take I'll take little, forever to do something. A little too much. A little too much. It's like, probably too much. Like, but having think, but having think, him there to having a lot of the reason it's it take it's it, it I've I've suffered from that is because I'd never had someone there who I trusted enough to tell me it's done. It sounds great. Plus, yeah, yeah. Right. plus yeah, it's a huge help. I, I think so, also, man. like, I ha- I bring a different aspect to the table. I brought... Fuck yeah. I, I, I turned five mi- uh, f- three mixes in f- basically five hours a day, and you didn't even hate them. So, like, that's... <laughs> they were, and I thought they were awesome. Yeah, because be, yeah. beyond that... Obviously, production beyond was not on point, them. so, like... Beyond not hating them, those mixes were excellent. Yeah. That, Thank uh, you. Un- yeah. Undeniably. But, I, don't, I don't like you know, that I'm not style. lying when I said I'm, that I'm I mixed them the today. <laughs> I'm saying, saying for the people, I don't like this kind of music, and they were undeniably excellent mixes. Right. Yeah. fucking so, so dialed in. T- to me, that's, like, routine, because I do ads and commercials and stuff like that. So, yeah. routine and, you know, like time yeah and i think in our case that could be something because you have that infinite patience and which i really uh admire actually because you you're He's also the idealist uh, yeah exactly and i'm like the cynical bastard and i love <laughs> I, I love that that dualism it's a great, I, yeah. it's it's a great awesome. dynamic it's, it's wonderful a good, yeah it's a good balance i, I want yeah. i want you guys i want you guys to make the most kick-ass fucking strictly streaming project i want you guys to what does that what? mean like like Strictly don't go play streaming. like don't go play live shows just make music for people to listen mm. to. Oh yeah yeah. No, there's no way you're doing. gonna get, there's no way you're gonna ca- be uh, having Casey on stage. Yeah it's not not gonna happen never again. Well, only if I <laughs> only if I like hog tie him and even then he won't perform but he'll technically be on a stage. I'll talk in tune. <laughs> yeah that's what I'll do. Ain't gonna happen. Yeah. I hate performing. I, just, I, I, I would never. Just, I hate doing it. I would Tell never be thing. evil enough to, to do that to you. So so record. because your your explanation for that was so on point that that the, w- you were talking about the mystery of like losing the mystery. Very weird. Yeah. Okay. So no one agrees with me on this. Uh, but I I understand that very clearly. But explain yeah. it to please but to, to, me, to, to to the audience. Yeah. Everyone. No one agrees with me on this. But um, uh, to me when you're experiencing a song let's call that experience art 
Okay. Because he like, wasn't even like a. He wasn't you, you, didn't, you didn't change the definition. Yeah, I didn't trigger you. I, I, I get, I get, I get what you're talking about. Go ahead. Sorry about not triggering you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're, when, 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 you're, when you're experiencing a song uh, and you're kind of you're really immersed in it and the singer has this, this incredible voice, you don't know what he looks like, nothing like that. There's a mystique and th- there's a mystique to it that I feel is just lost when you see the voice coming out of the person in real time. And for me, it's not about if the guy is, if the guy or girl is like good looking or anything like that. It's just that it, it makes it, you know, demystifies it. It it makes it real. And as someone who's so inspired by story and I spend, uh, I try to spend as much of my time consuming stories as I can have them be fantasy science fiction, stuff like that, where the stakes can really be raised to make the point, to, to drive the meta, to, to, to illustrate the metaphor in a way that the stakes are higher and it makes it, you know, makes it more powerful to me because I'm one of those people that I don't, I don't really, like subtlety isn't really my thing, you know? <laughs> can I, w- can so I interject I'm, so, super quickly? Yeah. Very quick. Okay. Uh, one, you told me this before, I believe, off camera, yeah. and I didn't know if I agreed or not. Now I definitely agree and I understand. Two, I would compare it to reading Tolkien versus seeing Tolkien in the movies. Hmm. I think, I think oh, but that, those that, are, that can be uh, demystified. I mean, they're still awesome movies, but I mean, well, no, 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 but, it, but, but, but the, can but be the movies aren't even the same medium, uh, though. I mean, and I guess neither is a live show compared to listening to a, a recording. But, um, but, but it's weird because like I've seen. You know, I mean, dude, we just saw Leprous, right? Yeah. And they couldn't I was been, about to. They, mm. and they couldn't have been better. Um, and I've never seen them live. C- compared to, and, compared and to what And for me, the live experience was actually what it really, like, hammered it down to me. For you, yeah. These, I mean, these guys really are worth really checking out. For and, sure, but there I was... I guess it's also not the same because it's, it's, it's the same artist interpreting it on a different medium versus... Tolkien wrote the books. Someone else is and interpreting Tolkien on the screen. Teams of people, yeah, teams yeah, yeah. of people, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. curating that's, the way. That's yeah. fair. That's and, fair. But but so anyway, so with singers, like even if the singer, that I love the recording, I've built this whole mystique and uh, uh, mythos around who they are, and <laughs> you know, and I see them as this like epic character in, yeah. this, in this fantasy, and then I go and I see them live, and it's like a dude who like probably just had a few drinks and is probably kind of afraid and maybe he kills it mm. but but now I know that that's where that voice comes from and mm. I can't listen to the record the same way anymore I don't I like relate it. To, I relate to this so much you know and and it's even I mean and god it's 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 devastating when the singer it sucks. Mm, sure, <laughs> yeah, of course. Like I'm not gonna listen to the record but, anymore. But, but so mm. I come from jazz. So I was I was listening to me and my big big brother. We were listening to these bootleg recordings of Chick Corea's live shows. <laughs> you know, early '90s, late '80s, mm-hmm. that were like so much more intense than the recordings. You know? Yeah. And then you listen to the recordings, well, and you're like, they kind of underwhelm you because they're just like so. And even they are like all over the place crazy. Yeah. But they underwhelm you because there's no, the the, the risk taking, the level of risk taking isn't as what it was on the bootleg C yeah. cassette recording. That's the thing too, because music, musicians moment. and musicians yeah. are much more, especially musicians in that domain are a lot more unbridled when it's like, this is, this is going to happen once. And they didn't know it was being recorded. Right. They might have, maybe someone. Oh, you know, they whatever. took all the risk they could. But they just take all the risk and there's no producer being like, would you just right bring it down? Plus, you know, yeah. jazz We're is clipping, often times you know, like that. Fucking jazz is often yes. better live than recorded. A thousand percent. Oh, that, yeah, the, the, the moment, especially sharing with a live audience. Did you know what pissed me off? This pissed me off real bad. Like, uh, I'm not gonna say the band's name, mm-hmm. but uh, fucking like, and I like them. I like their record. I've showed it to you. It's Crusade. Don't you can say it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> this band is killing it right now. They're blowing up. They're uh, okay. They're a uh, they're like a, uh, a pop metal band. Mm-hmm. And I I played you the stuff you didn't really like it that much. Uh, but I love them. I love the record. And mm. uh, <clears throat> I got invited to their show the other night. Uh, and, you know, it's like I'm not, I'm usually not going to go to a show, but I like definitely wasn't, I just didn't, I didn't feel like whatever. It was last minute. And I see the guy uh, yesterday. I'm like, oh, how was the, uh, or sorry, the, <clears throat> the show? Yeah. The, the band I can't say. He was like, yeah, I mean, 
it was entirely tracked. They were all on tracks. The guitar wasn't live. The singer wasn't live. It was, he was lip syncing. Everything was fake. That's not cool. And, That's not cool. And uh, he was like, but it was great. I'm like, what the fuck does that like, mean? What do you mean it was great? Like, what? like you you went and you watched, I, I you watched people lip sync to a Yeah, but I don't care. I, know, I, I definitely do. I like I don't I like, the jazz man I get, doesn't care that says a lot actually it's just weird no I mean I get that everything's <laughs> tracked in nowadays and um what does it say let's come back to that later but I just I get that everything's tracked in nowadays but it's just it just fucks me off when even even the musicians who know that what they're hearing isn't isn't really happening live no I don't care are still like oh it was great I'm like well, wait so dude what what, what was what was great about it he was like well, man, it's, it sounded really good. The the stage show was terrific. Their their whole aesthetic was really dialed in. I'm like, those are all important things that should be happening also. <laughs> yes, also. Is the no, it's also always, the it, band it, it, should be good, and they should have their aesthetic dialed in. And their taste. Most of the like, time, the it's a hybrid so anyways. Well, it, I mean, it was there's a hybrid. There's something, there's something too hybrid. I'll mm. give you it that. Was a hybrid. It was mm. a hybrid, but the lead vocal was was tracked in the lead vocal the lead That's r- not, rhythm guitars yeah, I like know, the I know. and by lead rhythm guitars i know it's just no but the fucking lead the, rhythm guitars. no but they weren't like yeah, they had those types of parts, I know what you right? mean. I know yeah what you mean. like they're fucking like i never you, got those terms i just don't i don't i don't i, I don't know it it kind of it kind of pisses me off that even the professionals who make the music and who would be in the bands like that are like okay with this and kind of apologizing for it it's like i mean i would like the what? Are the, I mean, I get the argument though. It's like, what is the label gonna just let them sound like shit live? Well, first of all, we should. I kind of just miss that it. when bands yeah. couldn't help but sound like shit live because they were shit, and then had to get good. Well, I don't know and if then they got are shit. Better. You don't know. Nobody knows if they're shit. If they're just. I mean, uh, Dra- Dragon Force's solution to that was to write songs that weren't impossible to play. That was their <clears> solution, <throat> and I think it was a good solution. It wasn't like that. Sounds like a Zappa's <laughs> solution. Like, yeah, I can, yeah. I can. But right, I mean, they right were able to play them uh, still. I don't know. It just it just kind of pissed me off. Yeah. Oh yeah, the well, show was great. Wait, what do you mean it was great? Well, everything was tracked in and it sounded perfect because it was all fake. But what do you but want? It was great. I just what do know. you want from a show? Like because I don't care if, if I'm in. Dude, Leprous sure, didn't but... track in anything. Sounded fucking awesome. Yeah. They, okay. That's they, obviously... they got they they had it all right. That's what I want <laughs> when I pay money. And especially yeah. as much as, dude, this fucking, this band I'm talking about, the whole tour sold out before they even played their first show. Mm. Jesus whole Christ. whole tour sold out before they even played their first Part show. Part of the reason probably why they decided to go like, on. Like, oh, well, we can't do it live, so we'll just lip sync later. Can't, or too afraid, or too scared, or well, I don't fucking know. It could be anything. But, you know, okay, but so people were entertained. Why, why, why do you think it's okay? Why, well, why? Who am I to say? First of all, and also like, no, who, are you, I, who are you to say? A, you spent an entire fucking life refining your craft, and you've never done uh, that. You go and you take your fucking licks like a man if you make a fucking mistake. That's what you have to say about it, and you're a fucking professional musician. So don't under humiliate yourself. It sounds like you're lowering because the bar of some further. fucking no, no, no. some fucking pussies who don't want to play live. Well, I just don't agree with that language. What okay. I think what I think is <laughs> fucking pussies is great, but yeah. I um you know, if if somebody wants to create a show, a live show of whichever kind they want, let them do it. And if people want to pay for it and they willingly do that again and again and again, let them do it. It's called Capitalism and it's I'm I I don't okay. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I try okay, to hold, I, I try on, to get rid of morals. <laughs> can I can I can I okay I'm yeah, very much can, about morals, but, but can you, I draw it can a line? bother you? Can I can I'm I draw, saying can is I, draw I don't know I don't know I mean I've been, I've seen a lot of shows. Can I for, can I please draw a line here? We're just asking why he's not bothered. Oh, I, whereas but, I, but, I, I don't know I, I don't I want, know if I would be because I, wanna, I wasn't there. But I want to find a I want to find a point where where you can I agree. This is why I want to draw a line somewhere. So, um. Casey has talked about a project with a mutual friend of everyone's here about making some very cheesy music. And I've even been invited to be a guitar player because every part of that. Yeah. Yes. Everything will be tracked in. Everyone's going to be in masks and all this weird shit. And it's not because of the integrity of the musical art per se it's specifically because of the memes and just to fuck off and have fun mm-hmm. that i get that that to me is fine to a certain degree what i don't like 
is the lie of, is lying about authenticity. That metal band is lying about the fact that they are authentically performing that in the moment. They are not by any means saying to their audience, hey, by the way, what you're seeing has zero to do with the sound other than it looks complimentary. I want to kill this conversation. Sorry to say this, but as a jazz guy, we don't have this problem. No shit. <laughs> we don't have this problem. You can't play. Everybody can fucking see him. There's no way you can fake it. That's there's no saying. way. There's no way you can go to a jazz club and run the tapes and like sync to it. There's yeah. just absolutely physically no way to do it. Uh, yeah. So that, but that's my point. Also, if somebody wants to do it in, in some other musical domain, like I don't give a fuck. It bothers the it bothers the shit out of me because of the dishonesty. Well, also the I'm like, day, no, that's a moral thing, dishonesty. and you, good for you. But I'm not going into the morals. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I, I that's, just that's where, I have, that's where we differ. I have a okay. lot. I have a lot of like for me, um, metal is part of who I am, and like I identify with it. You know, it's you, one you of the things. You identify as metal. Is that your? Is that your? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that your, your no, like gender? Like metalhead and metal culture. You know, it's like I grew up in it, and I'm obsessed with metal. Metal's life to me. And when when a band rises to fame within the domain of metal, and then embarrasses all of us by lip syncing mm. openly, clearly, mm. like everyone, even the non musicians can be like, can tell like. Mm. That's not live. That sounds fucking perfect. Mm. It sounds like the record. It probably looks he's ridiculous. Shaping, he shapes his mouth wrong. Like the, he's not getting yeah, the vowel sure. shapes of his mouth. No, we would. Right. We would obviously know. Yeah, yeah. It was obvious, and that just uh, you know, I, I, I have, I, I have too much concern for the integrity of metal, and for when mm. it has its time in the spotlight. I want it to be fucking like leprous, dude. The, the, yeah, the, sure. The, the like integrity, slick, look, look at my people. See how glorious the, we are. The, the integrity, Not fucking this band. The integrity <laughs> has to do with the authenticity and the honesty. That's where the integrity mm. is rooted from. That's that's why I take issue with it. And I, I don't. Okay, I don't mind if they're honest with their audience about it. If they are honest, like, hey, this is just to fuck off and have fun and look awesome. And this is we're not playing any well, of this. Well, Ronnie Radke was, was there was great. that. Remember there was that whole there was that whole like uh, discussion a few like a couple months ago where Ronnie Radke. <sighs> yeah, but Ron, he Ronnie's, was like, he Ronnie's was situation. Like, oh, our laptop got stolen, so yeah. we can't play our show yeah. tonight. <laughs> Ronnie's Ronnie's and Sebastian situation. Sebastian Bach is what the fuck? You're a rock band. You need a Come laptop on. to play your show. Exactly. But, but Ron, Ronnie's Ronnie's situation is not the same as not, tracking the entire show. He yeah. Also, I don't think he tried. And also, we don't know. It, we don't know enough to 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 really make that call. But yeah. So yeah. But, agreed. But but um, there you know the the purism that I see in the classical traditional classical music and and metal, which I come from. That is my bias. Right. So like to me as a jazz guy, that just sometimes seems. A little bit like funny, R retarded, funny, gay, <laughs> funny because like you know if you if you guy would let I'm gonna put it in a har really harsh way here. Trigger warning. Do it. Um, yeah, please. Do it. If you guys wouldn't fucking pre-learn your guitar solos that were supposed to be improvised, we wouldn't have these problems. Okay. Ho okay. Hold on. Coming from a classical classical tradition, weren't solos pre-learned and pre. Uh, Solos weren't solos weren't solos in this tradition. Solos are, comp are part of the composition to me. Okay, well then that's there you go. Well, I mean, I mean, I'd like I I'm willing to be very open minded about this. I was just under the impression there's. I'm multiple, talking about Jimi Hendrix. He didn't write his solos and play them back the same way. Yeah, his also his sad. also mostly aren't nearly as good as people say they are so <laughs> that's, that's, that's not the point the world, though. I, mean, that's <laughs> not, I mean I'm not gonna argue you didn't do that they were very good <laughs> I'm not gonna argue <laughs> that got to his face they were, were very good yeah what Jimmy the, the, the thing is like there wouldn't be not talking about there wouldn't be Sorry, metal guitar say. solos without Jimi Hendrix so let's start with that fully agree with that fully or, agree with or that yeah. Ray. it's or, also know. sick oh, yeah, when metal guitar players don't play the same solo live I mean whatever the sicker the band the less the same they fucking play as far as I can tell, with the well, 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 well,
yeah. kick assery. It was so I, good. So what yeah. I do, what I want yeah. to avoid, I don't want to sound like an improvisation purist either. No, that's I, I that's know, not yeah, my I point. Know, I know. Sure. But yeah. but I mean, I, I I do recognize that I do sound like a little bit like that. And but I'm fine with that because I'm a jazz guy. It, it's fun, to me a solo is fundamentally the, improvised. It, it's fun having the pushback. I, I like this well, is this is great. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah yeah sure. But like so, but okay, okay we learned something new. I didn't know that metal bands traditionally have this like they decided that that's like that's how it's they going wrote to the solo be, right yeah. Yeah. i mean i, I know i would say 90 percent of the time the, yeah 90 percent. yeah the maybe, problem yeah. that i see in the studio when i'm working with guitar guitar players per se and we we're, were in an, another domain and then you know you you take the rhythm and the phrasing like how they phrase and then we start going from you know count to count and bar to bar and and starting a phrase from the first count and ending the phrase on the last count of the bar and this is just you know even if if the solos that i would ask them to play in the studio for let's say a pop you know pop rock song they would they would be improvised they would still follow the same patterns and they would just have yeah. such a hard time breaking out of that pattern and this is one of the things that i would actually really enjoy talking about talking about with you like, what, what is isn't that funny first of all because the, you have super talented rhythmically melod melodically harmonically super talented people really technically able to do whatever they want with their instrument st stuck with these like you know and these kind of phrases that are like Dorky as a an AF. You, you could say white as fuck. <laughs> yeah, but also like stupid as fuck. Yeah. So like, and and this comes from that, and it, you know they still improvise, <clears throat> and it's it's great. But how about like what I often do is then I like I I capture maybe fifteen takes, and then I like just displace them like or parts of them by like an eighth note, uh -huh. and then it's suddenly like super cool, obviously because yes, right, but like. Why can't we just play like that? It's it's not. Um, I would say from a guitar player's perspective, at least, uh, it's not within our our comfort zone. There, there's there's so much of practicing licks. But rock music comes from Black American music originally. Oh, it's so, di it's divorced itself from that I a know, while ago. But how about we like, there, there, connect the dots? Oh, that's the best shit. That is the best right. shit when it gets I, reconnected. I, I do yeah. agree. It's so good. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, my favorite guitar players can do that and do, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, on, on average, though, in rock and metal and and pop, it's it's just not. Uh, it's just not an improvisationally it feels, feels very virgin. it's not improvisational imp improv centric yeah uh, of a of a when you're when you're when you learn in that style yeah you're so, not learning it you're not like dude i mean man the, the, rock, at, at the rock and metal the rock and metal that digs most into improv or like different solos each time are the ones that are more blues rooted Usu right. Usually, sometimes or jazz. jazz yeah, I mean, say sometimes even, jazz. Yeah, fucking that's, that's fusion, much, dude. I love that, rock but, fusion. But that's dude, that's like much more rare. Yeah. That, that's much more rare. Most times, if you're getting improv solos and metal, it's a it's a blues root. Right. Well, it has to be with a guitar. Like, yeah. there is no guitar playing without blues. Yeah, without a, you know, without a doubt. In, in 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 a modern yeah commercial modern, context. Context. modern context. Yeah, yeah. I, gotcha. uh, I don't mean to, I don't mean Alan to be. Holsworth. I don't mean to. Oh, no, there's a lot of blues in that. I don't mean to. Well. I don't mean to be a bitch, but my not much, my really? bladder. Well, not, yeah, not much, but it's there. My bladder yeah. is female this evening. I need to pee Jesus again. Christ. I'm so sorry. I'm okay. gonna do the same though. Yeah, you, for, but you first. Let's keep this. You for, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, without it out. Yeah. Man, Holsworth destroys, dude. Yeah, Mike. We're talking about the importance of aesthetic and how it's not just the look and the art and everything. No, but aesthetic that, is the un the underlying philosophy of. Or, or the representation of the philosophy in a logical mm. form, or something akin to that. Because I, I find that when I actually stay with within how, the boundaries, aesthetic has to do with how stimulus. Put the microphone on yourself Sorry. so we can. Aesthetic has to do with how stimulus makes you react emotionally. That that is aesthetics. It's more than that. It's also there's also well, no, logic. Psychologically, so one, one of the things yeah, that he, one of the things that, he pointed promise. out. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I explained to him how like how like with Holsworth and Meshuggah, they're amazing, but they kind of do the one thing, and that's why, even though they're so good, you can only take them in small doses. But whereas with Lepers, who are so good, they have such a varied sound, and they they span genres throughout one record. But part of the reason that they're cohesive is because they 
stay within the boundaries of the aesthetic. Yeah, and now the question is, what's the aesthetic? So it's easy, for example... It's usually like mood and colors, I hate to say. Vibe. Yeah, like... So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time... <laughs> Yeah, for those listening, uh, I've decided that the word vibe needs to be retired from the uh, from the the, uh, the, English the vernacular, dictionary. the public vernacular. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Fucking despise that term. <laughs> Vibes. The vibe. The vibe. I hate it. There's always a better word than that. Vibe. And you have got a great vibe. Or style. Yeah. But, but so yeah, aesthetic is aesthetic is something that you know that's beyond analysis. So we we can analyze. Going into the analysis of aesthetic, we can analyze, you know, the borders, but we can never really get to a, like a, a fully ex, uh, explainable analysis of what what the aesthetics is all about. It, it's yeah. it's uh, the um, kind of like the word it, work, it, works, for it works better. Right. It works better on a spectrum as opposed to trying to delineate out aesthetics into. But now, hard borders. The funny thing is, if you want to, if you want to make art or if you want to be unique in any way you need to be okay. able to understand the aesthetic and then somehow twist it at some point but you can't just twist it because that would be arrogant and you would be a fool and you would fail uh, but you would have like that's the great example is bebop once again you need to learn the language of bebop and then you then you can express yourself within an and especially outside of that language, but using these these aesthetic, um, you know, keys, <coughs> so that it is connected to that um, um, canon of, mm. of of art, yeah, and that's yeah. the thing, because yeah. art is about people, obviously. So mm. an experience. So this this is this is this is so important. Aesthetics. Yeah, I'm running out of vocabulary. Easy here. Even I would, there I would, go. I would even in English. Uh, sorry, even in Finnish. But so, so this is this is super important. Let's talk about aesthetics, if you, if you, if you could. I think much more of aesthetic has to do with timbre than what most music students realize or want to admit. I think so. No, I, I yeah, guitar that. players, yeah. tone. Yeah, Come on, man. Closer. Yeah, no, I. I yeah, like absolutely. tone is, like some guitar players would say that that's like ninety uh, percent of the game is tone. Oh, oh yeah, mm, yeah. I, I would agree with that. To, to, <laughs> yeah. Tone, tone, and articulation. It's, mm. it's a, it's a, it's a massive one. Like, I mean, composition is obviously important. Like, obviously important. Yeah, but coming back to the point where I, what I was making before about improvisation, and I, I'm recording these guitar players that are super good in every level, and they still form these dorky, the dorkiest ever phrases and i'm like asking myself why is this a thing why and, and, and why that, is it that, good why is it good or why it's bad no, why do they think it's good yeah or why why right. do why can't they break out of it because i'm mm. asking them to and they are they're definitely qualified and competent and they they on paper they can but they they kind of systematically aesthetically somehow are driven to those choices just kind of rigidly adhere yes rigidly yeah. adhere exactly so yeah. it is just so it's mind-blowing because this is this is like a universe this is a global phenomenon with with especially like metal or classical i'm gonna make i'm gonna make the most boringly white american band ever and call them <laughs> And call them concrete band aid because it rigidly adheres. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying. Like, there's the aesthetic, and then you have to, like, if you want to be like, well, I'll come back to my point earlier. Like, you know, the only way to actually uh, intellectually attempt something unique, which is already like a no go, like, yeah, right. Before, <laughs> like, you, you gotta be stupid to even try. The, the premise but, is terrible. <laughs> like, the premise is absolutely yeah. like nonsensical. But if you're naive and idealistic, like we are, you wanna try. You wanna give it a go. So then, yeah, give it a shot. so what's the thing? So what, 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 what is the only thing that you can get your hands on, like that makes any sense in that context? And that would be the aesthetic. You have to, yeah. you know, yes. you know your aesthetic. Your power metal, jazz. You know, power metal, bebop. Okay, what can we do, and mm. so that it would serve our, you know, expression, you know, what, whatever we want to say with our art, 
but in a way that it's unique and not just you for the sake of being unique because that would be truly idiotic yeah but but in in a cool way and the cool is the aesthetic isn't it right yeah so what's what's cool what's cool? Uh, cool no we don't know cool is an extremely flexible term yeah but also extremely. it's the only i don't think we can get deeper language wise no, I, I i mean i'm sure there's a way to i don't think we're armed to have the conversation oh, I, yeah, wish we, we, I wish we have were. people more <laughs> but i mean crazy cool, cool, cool in and of itself is is like Jeez, like, a but you get the idea, right? Oh, de- oh, without a so doubt. So what's cool? Like, power well, metal and bebop are very fucking I mean, far like, from each other. Like, cool. Like yeah. the the idea of cool is like an entire like PhD's worth of of topic to mm. dive into. You know what I mean? Like, sure. it, there, there's a lot to it. It's it's very. very I love complex. it though. We we without we a have, doubt we have beer left. So <laughs> and and that's the, the 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 for lack of a better term, the cool thing too is that we can just say the word. And we instantly relate. We don't necessarily mm. know exactly, yeah. but we instantly relate enough. And there's enough context mm. around the word to make sure we understand what the fuck we're talking about. Right, but let's talk yeah. about, let's keep talking about aesthetic. So power metal aesthetic, it's it's very established. It's very clear what it is. Heroes and villains, yeah. Yes, and, and the rhythm and the melody and the harmony and everything and the yeah. form. Yeah. U- European, structure. European the folk art. informed by Germanic 17th century. At its best. <laughs> <laughs> then you have very weird forms of all that. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's that's clear, you know? Yeah. And, and, and then, you know, you can analyze, like, Bebop was the other example. You can analyze that, you know, you can, like, take you know players like John Coltrane and you know Miles Davis and the, the household names whatever Freddie Hubbard you can run them through an algorithm and see like how they place their eighth notes and mm, you yeah. can have have an average and you know then you can okay well that must be something like that's the aesthetic right mm-hmm. you know so what 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 is what happens when we break out of those those forms and this is what i'm talking about now i I would i would slightly disagree with with coltrane it also came with the performance the performance on the instrument that he fucking dominated well all these people dominated more or less their instruments that, that's what I mean. It, it's but that's the, that's the, the fact, funny thing. Like the it, Chick Corea and dominate. all these these people, they played very differently. But God, the aesthetic Chick was is just the sickest. The, 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 the aesthetic is not is not the same. I, I like you, you could say it comes from the same source. It comes Clearly, from the same. Absolutely, it comes from the same crystal source. Crystal clear. But I, the reason why I would say it's aesthetically different is because you can say, well, Chick Corea is not a Miles Davis or a Coltrane. Ripoff. Have you ever heard a like, record? Like they're not, they're not ripoffs of one another. But yeah, but ever, that doesn't mean the same thing. Have you ever? To, we're, to, we're disagreeing on the word aesthetic. Sure. To, to, to me, the the clearest example of not definition, but example of aesthetic carried out in the art is when you hear a record and then you see the cover and you're like, "That's exactly what this record sounded like." Mm-hmm. That rarely ever happens. And I remember me. the first time it happened for me. It was not Arctica, <laughs> the record Ecliptica, and and, that, and uh, uh, my and Graf, who you guys have both heard me mm. refer to, and I remember the the second the first time we heard that music, and we absolutely we were obsessed with it. We never heard anything like it before, and even <clears> though we were listening to In Flames at the time, uh, to us it was totally unique, and and I I just remember the first time I saw the cover, I was like, damn, that's exactly what this music sounds like. It, that's the exact look that fits this music perfectly. Um, to me, that's just that's the way I would describe the experience of cohesion in aesthetics, right? Uh, for an artist, <clears throat> so you have the, the visual reference. The visual, I need that, dude. I well, fucking yeah, okay. need. But you I, also need the lyrical, like the jazz guys. The story. Don't. I need yes, the story I of understand. the lyric, uh, the story of the lyric, and the tam- the timbres in the arrangement, um, the textures, the textural palette of the arrangement. And then, the, and then, and then the art that's going to accompany it, right? All need to all need to be aligned. I see. The impression I see. That they leave so, on you, so I think. yeah, that that forms the aesthetic, and music is actually just one part of it, it if is. you will. It is. So, so yeah. yeah Without it's, knowing it's, what a band's cover art looks like, or their, uh, yeah, like because yeah, you know what the, the funny are talking the funny about. thing is, you can put on like a jazz record and another jazz record, and they can be aesthetically like. Very, very far from each other. Have very you ever liked? Yeah. Have you ever? And this will probably not. You probably won't have this. Maybe you will. 
Have you ever heard a, heard a song and then seen the cover art after you heard the song and the co- seeing what the cover art was made you like the song more? I, I don't think I've had no, that. No, Happens never. to me all the time. Really? All the time. That's amazing, yeah, bro. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> That's crazy. It's weird. It happened to me like last week with this band. I was like... This is pretty, this is okay. And then I saw the cover, I was like, oh, this is fucking awesome. Dude, to me, <laughs> it is love purely, this. purely the, the, the certain musical phenomena that tickle me. Yeah, the, the sonic experience, yeah. It's, Definitely. yeah, so, so like, for it's, example, it's this be. Zen, the North Lane song, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck which band is playing, I don't know, I'm drunk, whatever, but these are just piles of fifths in a certain order that I happen to personally be tickled by and I yeah. love this and this is my new favorite song he loves I don't give American a fuck how the like, cover art looks yeah, like yeah fuck it I, I specifically when I do my, my live streams on the weekends I specifically do everything in my power not to see visuals mm-hmm. I want to judge it just on sound but why not but why not have because that's because it, it, that, that like so much of today's world is tainted by all of the other context supplementing or or trying to um, what's the word compensate for the fact <laughs> that the sound is fucking garbage that I think I need to draw more but attention I don't know that's intentional draw, though uh, it, regardless what, what I'm, right, what I'm trying to sure. say what I'm trying, right, to say, yeah. what I'm trying to say is like I feel like today's culture revolves itself around closer to what Casey, how how Casey likes to digest music, which is like all of this multimedia. The whole package, con- yeah, the whole multimedia the, the pack, multimedia yeah. context. Yeah, yeah. it's like and, a movie. And, 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 yeah. I think I think it distracts you from the actual art of emotional sound in and of itself. Well, it's, it's definitely. I'm not going to claim that. I'm not saying what you do is bad. No, I know. I, I know. <laughs> I hope you aren't. Okay, well, I was actually kind of going to ask you, like, <laughs> is it bad if you, if you're, uh, like, do you, okay, well, you don't, you just said you don't, I guess, but I was going to ask, like, is there anything wrong with, with supplementing the, the song with art that enhances your experience in, of the song? In, why, in, would there, why would there be something in, wrong about in, that? Inherent, like, inherently, no. When it becomes... <laughs> A cultural trend where the music e- just can't stand by itself. Yeah, yeah, I that, get that, and, and yeah, that, me too. that yeah. is like one thousand percent happening right now. I mean, and ideally, we, we have we have such like, we have probably right. the the musically stupidest populace in the West right now I'm not, that we've had in a long time. I'm or not going to say I'm, that, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm happy about the fact that I can hear a song be like it's a seven. And then I see the art, the cover art, and then I think it's a nine. I don't know that I'm happy about that, really. Mm. I mean, but 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 my preference is for, certainly for me to hear the song and have it be a nine, mm. and then the cover is amazing, and then the song's like a nine point three or four I or mean, five because of that it it contextualizes I, the world in which that yeah, song exists. Yeah, but also exists. There, there's always going to be an element in, of reality that will contextualize any art experience we're going to have. Yeah, without so, a doubt. Like, yeah. Especially, yeah. especially if it's lyrics. So, man, like, I, I mean, don't want to get, like, yes, yeah, it, it, especially. A song you don't really like so, until the lyric is, like, something that happened to you last week that is there you been go. fucking your shit let's, let's, yeah. yeah. let's even take lyrics out of it. Let's mm. even take lyrics out of it. Let's take, yeah, let's take, take semanticism away. Let's take it away. Let's have it a pure, a purely ambiguous sonic experience that you have to contextualize yourself. Mm. Oh, I love that, and, and, and it it speaks to you in a way that you don't necessarily immediately understand, mm. which is which is kind of fucking well, crazy. Well, that's easy to do with instrumental music, for example. Yeah, that once happens. again the jazz situation. You have a you know jazz piano trio playing a, a standard. And the way they play it is just so phenomenal that it's just like, a, you don't even know what's going on. There mm-hmm. you go. There you go. Like, there's no other... Obviously, you, you can be experiencing that, in, a, let's say, in a jazz club, and they're playing, and you you see the passion in their every single, like, micro-movement and their eyes and, you know, their their body. Wait, and wait, how which, they, is, how, which is visual context. Right, there you go. There you go. So, like, it's, we can't, compl- you know, it wouldn't be fair to say that we, we, we will ever be able to divorce and, those things. And but I does it change I don't, I don't the... Think, I don't think we ever should completely divorce them. I, I'm just, I, I, I tend to agree with that. Does yeah. it, but doesn't it change? Will you admit or agree, at least, that, like, for example, if you see... Uh, what's, a good, what's a good example, actually? I mean, actually, kind of Ghost. 
from the band mm-hmm. Ghost. Mm-hmm. No, I don't no. even hate to the, talk the, about the, them. The, but... the aesthetic so mismatches their pussified fucking sound. Okay, it, is, it, it, seem, it seems like compensate. But... <laughs> it's a thousand percent compensation. Not to me. To me, to me, the I heard the music. I was like, okay, this is like okay, like throwback. Then I saw the context in which they are presenting it aesthetically. That's definitionally compensation. I'm just it saying. <laughs> no, no. Okay, maybe it's not. No, I, I, I think not it making is on up the, on for. The... They obviously love the music that they put out, and they worked with like fucking tons of huge people that they dialed in exactly the way, the way they wanted it, and then they have this awesome aesthetic and presentation. You, have you, are you familiar with the way you're talking about aesthetic ghost. now as a visual thing? <laughs> Aesthetic oh, as yeah, in this only case, a the stage thing. show and the art sure. and the way that like I, the band pictures. I just want to make know? sure that people understand. I I talk about aesthetics all very much as something that can be only only I threw, in the I domain threw, of music. I threw the definition out there. Aesthetic is how a oh, stimu- a, a stimulus yeah. makes you emotionally respond. I'm I'm also talking about the yeah. visual aesthetic of of the the whole package. Right. So right. visual. So but you that, that, use the word visual aesthetic. Yeah, that was I good. Will. That was. I just wanted to clarify. Thank that, you. That's an important clarification. Though, yes. Yes. Yeah. Because because like, if I listen to a song, and then I see the music video, like, have you ever listened to a Tool song? And then gone and watched the music video, and the music video is fucking weird, just super esoteric and and horrific, like in a great way. <laughs> I haven't. I, I but think, and then you go and, I think and then it can enhance the experience. And, 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 then, and then I think it changes the way that I hear that that I that I experience the song, even by itself. When I go yeah. and listen to the song the next day, I agree. In the car without the music, without the visual yeah. accompaniment. Now, now I watch the music video. I'm like. Well, that's the world that this song is happening in. Right. That's yeah. the world it's happening in. I've right. had those. Experiences. Or when a band sounds yeah. like a pop band, and then they look, then they're, then they look goth. They look like goths. Mm-hmm. Then the love song is different, right? Yeah. And I love that. I think that's an important facet of artist of being an artist in uh, as a band or just an art, you know, singer type artist, whatever. That really just is is really important and shouldn't be. Uh, shouldn't be dismissed and and or or, or uh, definitely or shouldn't be dismissed. Uh, okay, I don't think it should be belittled either. I, mean, I, I'm not, I am it not belittling it. it. I am not belittling it. What I'm belittling is the culture that fucking relies upon it as a business venture. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, sure. Hold, yeah. Hold, 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 let me let me let me let me. I, I, I have a fucking I have a, a, a realization here. So, um, as far as the tool thing goes, I get the the idea that you hear the song and then you watch the music video and then it contextualizes it for you more and can bring more meaning to when you hear it later and it changes how you listen to it. Like it makes it more immersive, the listening experience. It makes it, it more immersive. It, it, defi- it definitely can, without okay, a doubt. Okay, so you agree, okay. Now, now I mean, I've, yeah, I've, I thought I was saying this from the beginning. If I wasn't, this, this, that's, that's what I've meant the entire time. Okay. Having said that, if you are still failing to grab people before the other mediums are brought in for context, I think you failed. <clears throat> I think you failed musically. Maybe as a multimedia experience, you're succeeding, and I don't think that should be belittled either, but I think that not drawing the lines between the multimedia experience and the music experience is a problem because mm-hmm. mu- music is with with our increasingly digital visual age becoming more and more minimalized mm-hmm. of having that closed eyes strictly sound experience there's nothing happening other than the mm-hmm. music and that that is that's a recent uh, that is, thing by the way it's very recent that that's, that without, that's a doubt, yeah. without a doubt yeah because yeah. because uh, um Man, 1600s, 1700s, the only time you get to hear music is when you go and see the play, the exactly. story. That's not, that's not true. That's, up, not, that's not true. That's not true. There's we're, the we're, bard we're, playing the song. That, okay, but it depends on the social you, you class, are, obviously. You, but it, sure. it depends on the social class, but it also, it like, like, the religious use of music has been around for millennia. Oh, man, but talk about context, though. Oh, it's You only get more, to hear it when it's, like, when, when it's in this massive, glorious cathedral but and you they're don't, singing about you, the God no, that they no. want you to worship. You, and... Okay, it doesn't. It, it's around a fire. 
Mm-hmm. And maybe someone's wearing bones, but you don't know if anyone's eyes are open, and you don't know how sober anyone fucking is. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, but that's like, an aesthetic right there. I mean, I mean I like, <laughs> that's a, that's a huge part of the well, experience. All, all sure. I'm trying to right. say, all I'm trying to say is, there is something prominent and uh, prime about the sound that I think should be taken into account as far as if we're prioritized, talking, right? Yeah, yeah. If we're yeah. if we're talking mm. about if we're talking about music as an art, it music as an art, I don't think is or should ever be purely supplementary to to a, a, a another experience. Man, but well, you, it is, it is, it is you can make movies. you can make amazing art with the most basic ways and also the most bizarre ways. And and one of them is like taking random video material and cutting a video to a ex- pre-existing music piece can be great yeah and and the one of these is, one of these one of these examples was done um to a massive attack song somebody had the insight to take the film called the fall are you talking about the the fucking the one with like the old cowboy western the fall like it looks like gorgeous like beautifully it's colorful an indian but... indian like indian indian but, um, like India, Indian? India, Indian. Um, then, then we're not talking about the same movie. But yeah, either way, so sorry, continue. Look, continue. About ten years ago, a song called "Paradise Circus" by Massive Attack. Somebody had a vision that they're gonna just take footage from that film and just upload on YouTube their self-made cut for the song, and it makes me cry every single time I see it. I would call it's, that. I would call that inspired. It's it, it's incredible. It's it, it, inc- it's, you have to put the it link below. It took the video accompaniment though Sorry? to do that for you. Yes, yeah. and that's that's why I want to draw the link back to this discussion about the videos and these complementary forms of art. I, I, obviously, super important and everything. You know, they, they can do things to you that are insane. This I is agree. This, I'm fully, fully agreed. Yeah, this is this fully is why agreed. music uh, movies have music. The, the, yeah. the, only, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the yeah. only claim I'm trying to make is that I specifically, on on my own outlet, try to put more emphasis of divorcing the other context to help people also learn. That's like the fundament. Of mm. music, that's that's the fundamental. I, I can but, relate to that 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 um, this this um, mission. Okay, okay. That. That, I can yes, very yeah, much yeah. L- relate with that. I, my I, my if there would be if I would have to have a mission, that would be something very similar to that. You're fucking, yeah. oh, fucking a fucking All right, cool, cool. You know, I, I yeah, want I people to listen to music. I am like, by I no hate means. Me. <laughs> I am by. No- <laughs> I am by no means talking shit on multimedia experiences mm. or or other media um, or other media supplementing music. Mm. Just that I, it's it feels very cheaply overemphasized in today's culture. Mm. That's the way I would describe it. Yeah, but regardless, I, can... I think so too. Yeah, but man, is it? It's so much more immersive to me when 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 they work in concert. Working with more senses. Well, I- immersive. Yeah. Definition of the word, like yeah, yeah. Every, every sense, sense is being. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, yeah. So, but I mean, music is not supposed to do that per se. There, there are funny definitions of what music is actually. Oh, 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 yeah, for sure. Anytime. Yeah, for sure. Can we, can we have you back, Lund? <laughs> <laughs> no, I enjoy, I enjoy this. Hilarious. <laughs> it's funny. Your the disdain in your face was better than the statement itself. My only question <laughs> is when are we gonna start drinking? <laughs> I'm not tonight. After after we're done. I have to I have to feel good for our session tomorrow. True. So I'm done. Me too. I'm done drinking. I have to go home. Go to. Okay, so yeah, that's my. Uh, what time is it actually? Ten. It's, it's almost. Oh 10:30. yeah, good, good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Can yeah, someone drive good. me home? <laughs> I, I do not have the room in my car. Otherwise, I would. I'll drive you home. You sure? Yeah, for sure. Why not? Okay, thanks. No Thank worries. you. Uh, so one of the things I would love to do, I, I've said this multiple times. Now that we've had you solo, now that we've had Paddock solo, 
I want to I want to do regular things where like while we're just fucking off, I can just kind of like start setting shit up, get you guys in seats, and then we can just be ridiculous. Yeah, please. <laughs> Just, yeah. Yes, just please. Dr drunk and ridiculous, just yelling. At I'm each not other. drunk, but I I really did enjoy this conversation. Yeah, man, that's fucking, fucking great. Yeah, it's fucking good. This is yeah. like tip of the iceberg. Like honestly, this would yeah. be great, man. No, I mean, there's so much to talk about. Like it's so much endless. More. Yeah, absolutely endless. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, Yuka, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for you. having me, Appreciate man. You, man. Hail Satan. Hail the joy. <laughs> when? Pra when? Praise Jesus. Praise Bye. Jesus. Bye. Just, just, Bye. To, just to Ciao, piss ciao. off Casey. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>